Power 101 presents The Jay Thomas Show Call 888-STERN-101 The Jay Thomas Show This is is The Jay Thomas Show On Howard 101 Thomas show at uh, Howard 101 with Madison and uh, and Shirley. We're in uh, New York City, Woo! and um, we salute you. Jay you know Thomas. what? I all you know. We get a lot of emails and a lot of calls. I always sound like hell on uh, on Friday morning, and I the people uh, you know. I, what's the use of reading them? You sound drunk. You sound tired. Whatever. You know. Um, I read a lot about um, about uh, people that go to bed early and they all that. I go out at night. And and I always have, and I always enjoyed it. And so um, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to sound awake tomorrow because I'm in New York. I'm leaving the building, and Shuley hands me a little uh, plastic package, a little going away, a little present. going away present. So I walk down the hall, and I just pop it in my pocket. I'd left my. Uh, Can we credit- talk about how how uncool the handoff was? Oh, it was totally uncool. <laughs> it's like it was, I mean, I if like, there was a, a like a like a vice squad guy nearby, yeah. they'd, uh, they'd have had probable cause. I right? had there in my head. I'm like holding it, and Jay's just walking by me, and I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, there you go. <clears throat> so you do the handoff. And so I I um I get in the subway and a guy gets sick in the subway, so they stop everything. Oh, like vomiting no. sick, just like laying down. Why did you take the train? Your hotel's right up the street. I went downtown to get a, my credit card at a cigar bar that I left it at uh, a few nights ago. Oh. So I'm going downtown and the guy gets sick in the train. So I want them just to roll him out, out of the train. And let's continue. Bring him on to the platform and administer to him. It's look. There are, what, 15 million people in this metropolitan area. If one less guy is fine, right? So now we're there. and What you, was wrong with him? He just was, he might have had a heart attack. They clear everybody out of the cars, and we are sitting and waiting. Mm-hmm. And he's laid out in the thing. Right? You can see him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can look through the little window. They moved us out of the car. So we wait and we wait, and they go, we're, we can't move. We're not going anywhere. So we all have to leave the thing. I start trudging. I'm trying to find this place, and I go, man, I'm so pissed off. I'm gonna, and I reach in my pocket, and there's my little, and I, I see these little three little nubs that you gave me, right? And so I light a nub up. Yeah. In the train? No, no. outside, because I'm walking and walking and walking, because the trains are all stopped, right? Because of the sick guy. Oh. Who they should have just buried right there, or thrown on the third rail, or I whatever. Have for you. I've been on the seven train. If you have a heart attack, there's nobody on there that will save you. No one over there knows Aww. any medical assistance. Whatsoever. Well, no, they had a guy, and you know what? I'm thinking. But there's so many Chinese. I'm not giving him mouth to mouth resuscitation. That's the other question. Everybody's yeah. looking at each other. He's gasping for breath. Oh. Yeah. We just left the car. Sure. Right. So that somebody really would have helped your show, though. No, I'm not putting my been lips. All over the news. No, and him, he would have ended up, the guy would have ended up dying. He would have been sued. Sued, right. Oh, yeah. You can't even help people nowadays. So I take a couple of blasts, and by the time I get to the um, to the, to the the cigar bar. To wherever you were going. I haven't the faintest idea <laughs> what I'm doing. But it. apparently, I have credit card bills in my pocket totaling <laughs> over $1,000. <laughs> I was buying stuff, you know, and so. Then it got, I don't know what happened, but it got a little boisterous. And we start arguing about politics and stuff. Now I'm alone. There's You're nobody alone, with me. Right. There's no one with me. <laughs> so I'm arguing about politics, and I'm drinking um, I'm drinking bourbon, right? And I had just read this. Uh, th- it's a funny ad. It says, um, uh, here, maybe I brought it with me, but it, oh, here, this, is, this is it. This is what I love. I saw it last night. Um, in the Civil War, when the soldiers were getting their legs sawed off, yeah. they weren't given a vodka cranberry. All right, it's, it's a bourbon ad, right? So I'm drinking bourbon, right? Oh, wow, that's nice. That's, that's great, nice. is it? Yeah, like, that's great. All right, Mike, we have to cut his hand off. Get him a vodka cranberry, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm completely loaded. 
And the next thing you know, I stumble out of there, you know, and I get out of there, and I argued about the stupid, uh, you know, election. What side were you on? Both sides, just to piss people off. I figured, off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody would like McCain, I hated. I'm a lot I, like yeah. you. Yeah. I went back and forth. Yeah. So I get home, and I go, I'm never going to wake up. I go to sleep. I call down at the thing, wake me up at, you know, 5 o'clock. I set my alarm. I don't. Tr I am so paranoid by this stuff you gave me right. that I don't think any, there's no clock made that could wake me up. It's called Rip Van Winkle. Now the, uh, I'm positive that I'm going to lose my job. I'll never wake up, <laughs> or I might die, because now I'm seeing the guy in my head who's in the train that I didn't help. Right. Right. So I'm right. Like, He's haunting you now. I get on the phone, and i got to call Sean Kelly. What time was it, Sean, when I called you? Pot is great. Why, this, would, you, why would you call Sean to talk you down? Jay, I rounded it off to 1 a.m., but it was actually 12.54. Is that all? Oh, so it was, oh, okay, it was, yeah. that's Were really you early. asleep yet, Sean? I was dead asleep, thank oh, you. Oh, Sean. I was going to leave a message and say, Sean, make sure you wake me, man. So <laughs> so when you answer the phone, I, I, had, I said what to you? What you said, I, uh, Sean, there's been an intervention, <laughs> but I knew it wasn't real because my good friend Sean Kelly wasn't there. <laughs> I had dreamed of something there was an intervention. Oh. I was completely gone. That's great. And it's like so it was, you fell it was asleep like that. And then you woke up. Sean! <laughs> I dreamed I was in an intervention. When did you have this dream? I don't know when. I just know that, like, all of a sudden I was going. It was like a daydream. Who knows what it was? No, it was this you stuff. You went into a time warp. A, or something. a trance. You went into a trance. Because you didn't go to sleep. You weren't asleep yet. I don't know. Continue. I don't know where I was. Go I ahead. don't remember anything. Wow. And and what's funny is, I just know that I had pancakes at about 10.30. That's the other thing I remember. But one time, my brother and his wife uh, smoked something that was dipped in PCP or something. Yeah. And they lost like four or five days in their life. You know, Shirley, I'm not kidding you. If that's the stuff you do all the time. Jay, this right. is next Friday. This is, yeah. uh, we're in October 31st. <laughs> yeah. But if that's the stuff you do all the time, right. you had better be careful. Really? That could rearrange DNA, that stuff. <laughs> now, I'm not joking. You might have, uh, you know, like a little odd looking kid one day, you know. I got to get a little bit of that because yeah. I might be having sex this weekend and in order to numb the pain, I need some Something like that. <laughs> yeah, but I got news for you. Uh, Where do you blow the smoke to numb the pain? That's the other thing. If anybody's yeah. getting laid for my weed, it's going to be me, not anybody else. <laughs> uh, call 888 Stern uh, uh, 101. Uh, we will have Cheech right. and Chong uh, in here uh, later on uh, this morning. And um, But uh, uh, this economy thing is a, a very difficult. And I, and I would want to have somebody come in and explain the economy or tell you what to think of the economy. I was uh, talking to United Airlines last night. I had another, like, a Punjabi kind of person on the phone. And I thought, we need to have an Indian economist come on here. Apparently, everything we do in the United States is uh, go goes to India. So we have outsourced the explanation to the economy. And coming up later, Pandat Raj Kumar Sharma is coming on. We're going to call him. to cover your left eye. In and India. That. He's a numerologist. He's a gesture reader. And he consults many celebrities and Indian politicians. And uh, he's uh, going to tell us about the about the. He's only been on Indian radio. This, this will be the first in time in American Indian radio. Market is fucked. Yeah. So we'll talk Indian to him a little while. Indian people are very very nice. Uh, so we'll find out. And uh, also, Cheech and Chong uh, will be here. Uh, I think um, they're they're on tour. They hated each other, right? Uh, we, I had them both on separately, and then I was walking by and I saw them on the Wise Guy show uh, the other night, Wednesday night. And we start talking, and I said, why don't you guys uh, give us a call on Friday morning at uh, Howard uh, 101. Are they in town? Are they? Um... I think they are, because I think they're doing some shows in, in New York. They uh, were here the other day. But, uh, you know, they, there was a funny thing on Howard when they when they were on Howard. Uh, he, Tommy Chong, apparently, the one stipulation he had to get back together with Cheech was that his wife, Tommy's wife, would open for them. Yeah, che you know, Cheech talked about that, and, and... And Howard said to him, he says, do you think that's fair to Cheech? And Tommy says, I don't care about Cheech. <laughs> well, Cheech actually said when, when he was doing our show, I've only had him on separately, Tommy said he hated uh, Cheech right. when he was on our show. And then, you know, a few months later, they're back together. It shows you what money will do. Yeah. And and then Cheech uh, said, I, I said, what's what's his wife like? He goes, it's funny. Uh, you know, <laughs> so, you know they kind of, so what did Cheech say about her? Uh, I mean, he was kind of, he was saying nice things about her. But, you know, I, you could definitely tell that that was a weird, like, uh, like moment for them as far as negotiating this whole tour, going back on tour. And, and from what I understand, Tommy was, was very adamant about his wife opening. Like, Is she a comedian? That's what I hear. I, I have never we, seen we her We had perform. Tommy on, and we talked about this, right? I didn't know. We had I Cheech on. I didn't know Tommy Chong. No, 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 we, we, we had, had both of them we had, on. Okay, I remember Tommy. When 
Cheech. Cheech was on. Uh, they had just gotten back together. When Tommy was on, he said he hated Cheech. His wife plays guitar, I think, and, and she plays some instruments and does some comedy. You know, look, as I said last, as I said when I got here, there's something about uh, there were supposed to be these big stoners in the whole thing, and now you're dragging your wife along and she's the opening act. I mean, yeah, you might as well come out with two yeah, police officer badges on. <laughs> I mean, geez, you know how what? Much and the kids get? are backstage. It's like, you know, yeah. it, it's like when you meet these people whose wife or husband manages them. You know, it's like, it's no good. It's like they're it's, on stage. Hey, man, let's, oh, uh, the white pacifier's in the other bag. Oh, honey. man. <laughs> Sorry, where was I? Well, you know, when I first met um, uh, uh, Crosby, not still, not young, uh, uh, Crosby. Nash and Young? Yeah, Crosby, Nash, and Young. Nash had about a 20-year-old wife. And you're right, he had a little baby, Yeah. and here are these guys that I idolize, stoners and the whole thing, and he's carrying a baby bag, mm. and he's with the 20-year-old wife, and... Uh, you're like, what happened to free love, Exactly. Dude? What happened? I don't, you know, and it's it, what it does is it lowers them uh, in your eyes. Uh, my wife would never open for me. My kids would never be in a, in a business with me. I, it would be embarrassing to turn and, and and oh, by the way, uh, remember when Sean Kelly? Ran, well, that's my my kid over there. That's that's. I, I don't want your kid. Or, let them get their own friggin' career, right? Without attaching like some sort of a a mole or something to you. I don't. So if Sam came <clears throat> to you and said, "I really want to be an actor," you that's would, none of my business. You wouldn't help him at all. No, none of my business. You wouldn't help him get an agent. No, none of wow. my business. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Who helped him? Nobody helped him. Thank you. I, when I went to my dad, he get out like that. No, it made dad, him who he is today. Can I have a hundred bucks to take the bus to New York? Get out. You could give him a little help, though, a little guidance. You know what? That's how Good your luck. kid ends up in rehab. When Good you luck. Little help. You're, I disagree with you, Jay. Help him do what? Just I don't know. Give him the little. Put. I mean, I'm not saying be like Demi, Demi Moore and Bruce Willis. How you know their daughter Rumor is, is in movies because she's Rumor Willis. Have a nice time. But uh, Jay would help, and he goes start on Highland. See you later. No, here's here's what would happen. He would absolutely absolutely nothing to help. The one that would come to me for help would be the least talented one. Right. It's almost like a biblical thing. He okay, will then come. if they're least least talented, at least get them the audition. No, let the them least talented one always wants to do the thing that's talented. The one that's smart and ought to be a doctor or a lawyer or something wants to do the wrong thing. And so, um, no, there's, you know, I don't believe in, in, like you once wanted me to get, send something to my agent or whatever. Yeah. I sent it over there. They had no interest, none. I said, this is a friend of mine. Here's her tape. You know, I don't know. They probably didn't even listen to it. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, because that's not how it's done. It's like being a middleman for yeah. weed. It does you no good. Yeah, but exactly. you know what? I, it, it just, it's just a headache You're afterwards. with a big agent, and I thought, hey, let me get... You know what? That's bullshit, because I have a friend who's with another agent, and yeah. he gave my shit in, and they did call me. Really? Are you signed with them? No, this was a few years of back. Of course, then they just called you. Mine's ruder. Well, no, I all. went out to a few call. I, I met with them. I went on a few auditions. No one can help you. I you either make it on your own, or you don't. I think in the voiceover industry, you have to know someone. Bullshit. You know what? You don't have to know anybody in any industry. You know, if your friends make it, you have a chance of making. You probably went into your agent and said, "Listen to this." She piece, probably sucks, but take a listen. No, yeah, thanks. I did not. Thanks. No, the the truth is, is that everybody is talented, and it's just luck if you happen to make. And it. go look, back, look, go look back at, in time to the first ever voiceover guy. <laughs> Who did he know? Nobody. You know who that exactly. was? Exactly. The guy that did the burning bush. <laughs> you know what, though, Jay? You think that was God? Nice. What, are you kidding? That's the guy nice. that did all the movie trailers. It's all almost right. like you don't want Shuli and I to succeed. You just want us, want us to be your little... Can video. I be honest with you? I'd like you to show up on time yeah. and do the radio show. I don't care what happens to you after right. that. You do. By the way, did a friend come in and, and uh, recommend you? I asked you to come in. You did your thing. You were fine. Same with Shuli. Nobody, no, no friend was recommending you. You know how many people want to take your place? And I don't take their tape and their... Right, right. I tell them no. I have no interest in them. But you know the value you, of my, of my on-air skill and my talent. You I could don't. pass it along. To I've already made my decision. So and so. That's all. If you're one of my children, I'd have fired you by now. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Joey the Schizo in uh, Seattle, Washington. My God. Uh, it's, uh, what is it, like uh, 415 out there. Uh, it is the Jay Thomas Show at Howard. I haven't heard what, from 101. I haven't heard in a long time. Ages. Perfect schizo time right about now. <laughs> now, Joey the Schizo lives in a uh, shelter. Still? Uh, 
out there. I don't know. It, it's Crazy. spiraling down. You were trying to be a comedian, and we were trying to help you, and you were sounding good. Uh, what what happened? Line one. What happened to your um, uh, line one? Somebody hit a button. Line one. Once, what's happening now? Oh, my God. you got to be kidding me. There's an eight million. Oh, there he is. There's a I'm meteor here, headed. Oh. All right, I'm listening to you. <laughs> so what happened to you? We tried to help you. We were just talking about helping people. Is your career going anywhere at all? Oh, well, I'll be doing open mic at LAPS in two weeks. Oh, so you're still doing that? Yeah, yeah. I'm staying in the shelter right now. I may have a civil suit against the city. but You have a civil me. suit against what city? Seattle? No, no, no. It's a city in Snohomish County. I don't wish to name at this particular time. What did they do to you? How did they How did they affect you that you're going to uh, sue the homeless I shelter? Was, I was kicked out of the bus station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. After 13 minutes after I bought a large coffee in the coffee shop, mm -hmm. but a security guard is very discriminatory against people that stay at the mission, which is right down the street. Right. I refused to leave, called the police from the <coughs> cop on a security guard, Police backed him up, and I was given a 60-day exclusion notice, which is a 60-day bar from the bus station. You know how low you have to be not to be allowed to be at a bus station? Uh, given the fact that every the scum of the earth uh, is allowed to sleep in the bus station, you were you're a barred for 60 days. I was, I was kicked out of a coffee shop while I was reading the New York Times in my BlackBerry browser. Jo wow. You have a BlackBerry? So you're a homeless I'm guy with a BlackBerry, <laughs> and you're reading the newspaper. Why would they pick on you? Because I had some words with the guard the Saturday before that happened last Monday. It took exactly five days for me to get a hearing, mm -hmm. talk to two newspaper reporters. I was awarded an attorney by the legal aid here. Hold on, hold on. Joey, Joey, do you have the scabs on your face and all, like the guys that I see that no, no, they throw no, out no, of the... Scabs they always face. have scabs, don't they? Sure. Do you notice that the one factor is that you're always involved with all these blow-ups? <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 Chuli, why don't you go call a fucking weed fairy, asshole? Listen, I'm serious. Like, like weed fairy? I, weed if there was a weed fairy, I'd have her on speed dial. Uh, but uh, uh, no, what I'm saying is, you mm -hmm. know, there's not secu security guards don't wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to fuck with this guy when it comes to the coffee yeah, shop. You're, you know, look, look, Joey. You see, no way, let me do it. They close the place at 7 a.m. from 7 to 9 a.m. They clean up so everybody goes up the street to the bus station where they have all the city buses and the local buses. They have Greyhound and mm -hmm. Amtrak and the sound of the train. And they go to this bus station to use the bathroom. Now, they've had a lot of problems. You mean all of the homeless are in there peeing on the on the seat and, and, and crapping you know, in You the, know it's oh. bad when a coffee shop closes at 7 a.m. <laughs> To 9 a.m. They're like, yeah, this is our busiest hour. Let's shut down for a couple hours. Oh, Joey, doesn't it disturb you that you're right in there with the dregs of the earth, that you are considered... Uh, you're following a herd No, you're one the of the restaurant. people that, that, that nice people walk down the street. They don't want to make eye contact with you. Does that not bother you? No, listen to this. I met a guy the other day. He's got 15 DUIs on his record, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. he, was, he just got out of jail. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how he might be able to get his license back in four years. I was like, four years, get your license back. You ought to take your shoes away and not let you walk anywhere. Now, the, the last night as I argued with these people about the economy, one of the things that the conservatives said was they don't want to give money to people like you. That's why they don't want to elect a Democrat is because of people like you. You know, when you got Greenspan on TV right now saying, oh, gee, I was wrong. We do need to regulate the fucking corporations in America. Gee, it took him about a half a minute to figure that out. But what about you and the dregs of the earth that, that everybody is against? Oh, I'm not a drag. Really? I'm not a drag. I'm fleecing the system because the system fleeces the poor. So and you I'm are fleecing the government to, 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 as a... So as you're like the Robin Hood of crazy. There you go. He's a Robin Hood of homeless people. Robin Hood of creeds. That's All a good right. one. I'm Robin Hood. Of so now, right now, it's almost uh, four thirty. Where, where do you? What are your plans for the rest of the morning? Oh, the plans for the rest of the morning. I'm waiting to get in touch with my attorney to find out with the room number and which courthouse I have to go to for my hearing on the twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do for the next six hours before that the guy wakes up and? Oh, basically sit on my ass, have breakfast, and then I'm going to be frozen for about two hours. All right. Now, now you, when you sleep at the shelter, is does the mattress smell like piss? 
No, but there's big bugs all over the place. They mm. just sprayed yesterday, and I got a foot thrown I can't get rid of. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, Joe. Jo- athlete's foot, all kind of crazy shit. All good, right. Good times, buddy. You, you know wear flip flops in the shower? I don't know what that is. Do you oh, wear I take a shower with about 30 or 40 guys, and they're all nuts. You, you take a shower with 30 or four other homeless guys? Oh, um, uh, no. This, this place is full. It's got 58 beds upstairs and another 49 downstairs. Are they all Obama fans, that whole group? <laughs> Huh? Actually, there's a couple of McCain supporters, if you can believe that stupid shit. <laughs> McCain will drag them out and throw them in the street. Palin. What's that? There's a couple of guys that even like Palin. They all want to fuck her. <laughs> that's at least understandable. Yeah, well, well that's fine. Yeah, but... All right. All right. Thank you, Joey. Jo- Joey the Schizo. Thank you. From thank Seattle. you, Jay. Thank you so much. You see uh, that weed ferry at the shelter, my number. Uh, Joe, Chicago, uh, the Jay Thomas Show uh, with uh, Shuley and Madison. Yes, Joe, good morning. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I just wanted to ask Shuley if he, if he has that voice all the time or if he ever blows his nose. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you something, man. That's our shoes. <laughs> I don't know. Who. I don't know, but I got to tell you. Joe is Chicago. My girlfriend, all right. What's she, 815 area code? It is in Chicago? Okay. My girlfriend t- does this no, new thing not. now where she turns on the air conditioner at night when we go to sleep. And and I tell her, I said, open the window. It'll be, it'll be ten times colder. You know what this is any- like? Listen, so listen. Right. So she goes, I can't open the window. The sound bu- keeps me awake. So we have a, a 747 engine air conditioner all night. That sound she can go to sleep with. Little birds chirping outside keep her awake. So I wake up completely congested. Why don't you suggest earplugs? <laughs> I told her today, I said, hey, listen, here's here's a little something for you. Mm-hmm. My job involves talking. Mm. Mind if we shut the fucking you air off You need a night? neti pot. What is that? Oh. A neti pot. And you know what? We'll ask this guy from India that. I've been using the neti pot forever. You take it, you fill it with warm water and salt, you pour in your nose? and you pour it in your nose. Right. You'll never sound like that. I again. got Poland Joe, I'm Joe, let me hear right your now. voice. Let me hear your. Let me hear your Shuli impersonation. <laughs> hey, Joe. Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Stick your head in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's the. I apologize. You know I don't what? Think you you know, sound very nasal. You know what's Joe? funny I do, though? I do. He's Every right. big entertainer wants to be, uh, you know, imitated. Yeah. And the guy imitates you. And, I'm and, flattered. You, you know, you said I'm all, flattered. You know. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Jerry of Ohio. It's Thank the Jay you, Thomas Jerry. Show. Um, yeah, we'll be checking <laughs> hey. with, with an Indian guy about our economy in a, in a few minutes. Yes, Jerry of Ohio. Hey, yes. Julie needs to move out of the Motel Six and get a place. Oh, yeah, he does. You know? Yeah. I was at the Lucky hey. Eight last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Jay, why don't you uh, pull another one of them shorties out of your pocket and smoke one? I want to hear the difference between. Uh, oh, yeah. I, we'd have to carry him out in a wheelbarrow. Right no, you know what? I'm not. No, I'm really not anymore. I, no? It was hours ago, but, you know, it was like he's dipped in something. Were so. you scared? No, wasn't Please. scared. This man's a vet. I was walking down the well, street with a. Being stoned in Manhattan in this area is is That's, very, very Yeah, if you're a chick. No. I'd be paranoid. No, when I first oh, moved here no, nine I years wasn't. ago, no. I was a big pothead. I, I smoked a lot of pot, and then I stood in Stein, Times Square stoned, mm-hmm. and I could never, ever get high again. But you're outside. a nut. Do you realize that you're a nut? That you're something? there's something mentally wrong with you? Kooky? I try to believe that, but I'm really not. You are You don't nut. have to believe it. We'll yeah, you have you. made yourself into a nut. You load yourself up at night with Ambien. You can't go to sleep, but you keep taking it, right? Uh-huh. You're a nut. But I don't cut myself. Not yet. Well, not yet. <laughs> you know what I like? I never tried to kill myself. That's right. You're not a nut. You know. You I'm know. not crazy. I don't know how to make a noose. You make me feel bad about myself. Because you need to stop being a friggin' nut. That's why. You need to stop being insecure. This is the dream about the intervention you had. This exactly. Was you need to, to stop this. it. It's not that easy when it you were is. screamed it... at as a child. Well, listen. The other day, you know what Dr. It's Phil said? You know what Dr. Phil said to, to me? Responsibility. Yeah. At a certain point in life, we don't want to be saying that, you know, you're way past 17. He said at 18, you take responsibility for your life. It's not that easy when your family is on your case. When you're in an... You don't Get understand. rid of your family. What, what? Where? Get rid of your family. I bet the guy's missing that nasally voice. I'm right sorry. About you. I'm sorry, Jerry of Ohio. Thank you very much. You are not Jerry, a warm, empathetic human Do you listen to your parents, being. Jerry? Does your Do your mom and dad still control your life to oh. the point yes. where you have to go to oh. therapy and you're going to get your chin fixed and all that stuff because your life is That's no good? Me. And your father, your father threw 25 years ago, he threw a frozen uh, hot dog at oh, you. I remember, that. You remember that story? Yeah. You're in therapy because of a frozen hot dog. 20 years ago. He threw a pack 
vodka frozen hot dogs listen, at listen. my leg. And he hits you in the leg, right? And I limped yep. for a week. Right. How about the time my mother chased me around the house in front of Mara Fruiterman with a Ked sneaker? She chased me in a circle around the house. You and sound like a drunk. You really do. <laughs> you do. So chase me in a circle. You and Joey ought to be at the bus station together in Seattle. The Fruitermans couldn't look me in the eye after right. that. Mara Fruiterman is now my friend on Facebook, and I can't wait to write her and say, remember when Sedell chased me with the Ked? <laughs> Jerry of Ohio, I wish I was the guy that died in the subway last night, okay? That's a, that's... Right, it would have got you out. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jerry of Ohio. Thank you. Jason of Michigan, the Jay Thomas Show. Yes, uh, Jason, how are you? Are you excited there in Michigan, the big Michigan-Michigan State game uh, this weekend? Is that a big deal for you? In well, I'm, I'm I'm really not into college sports, and I'm more of a hockey fan. So. Nice. I see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, uh, by the way, Madison, I feel your pain. My mother used to hit me with the vacuum cleaner attachment. Oh, oh. baloney. Baloney. Let me ask a question. Did no <laughs> one deserve... Doesn't it? No, no one up. deserved the beatings that. They, listen, I have children, and if I you really don't call your kid a spoiled, rotten brat every single day of their life, why didn't you straighten up like with it. your parents then? Why didn't you stop acting like that? If my uh, parents had said a you're a spoiled, rotten they would brat, call me a brat. It was no. completely cyclical. You are I sick. I didn't come out of the vagina a brat. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I'm sorry, Jason. Go ahead. All right, my my, I, I'm curious about something. You know, mm-hmm. the, the the show started out with a little bit of weed talk and. You know, it, it happens on some of the other radio shows that I listen to, and I got nothing against smoking grass. You know, mm-hmm. I buy it myself mm-hmm. every once in a mm-hmm. while. But mm-hmm. you guys are like gainfully employed people mm-hmm. for a company, and it just that shouldn't have happened me. in the hallway. And I'm reporting surely to the security. <laughs> I'm no, no, I didn't I'm mean for it to, to happen. No, no, I no, thought he was. Uh, no, listen, no. Okay, let's listen to Smokey the Bear, who's going to lay down the law for all of <laughs> all us, right. and go ahead and I'm piss on everybody. You're kidding. Apart. None of it happened. It's an act. It's all radio. Act radio. Are you kidding? You think like an episode? A cold case. You think Ronnie's actually Howard's limo driver? Yeah, Are you it. insane? You think I walked here today? I, I didn't. Yeah, so I, I come on. I was in the subway with a dead guy last night. No, come on. It's All an right. act. You Have Robin's you ever thought, black? Jason? Maybe we're yeah. Robin, that's right. Robin's white. You think you think Madison's really screwed up? Come on, it's all an act. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great morning. All right, thanks a lot. That was easy. What was yes. he going to do? Tell us not to talk about it. I know. You know, I mean, listen. The, the reality nar- is, the nar- get on the line. <laughs> yeah, the reality is, is I'm sure that it should be. There are more horrible things you could have handed me in the hall. Absolutely. I, you, but I, you know what though? Almost anything you would have handed me oh that would have been. You did a, it here? No, I didn't no. do anything here. I did nothing. It's all an act. Uh, I've heard of some shit going down. I've heard of cocaine being snorted in this building in a room. If I were you, I would move on from that. Oh. Because they will question you. I've never heard of anything oh, like that. It wasn't that. me. Um, well, the, the, if you know who it was, then security would like to see you after the oh, show. Here they come. Actually, I'm deaf. I haven't heard anything. Tom of Cleveland. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Yes, Tom, how are you? Uh, Madison's the only one that doesn't know all this is an act. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Yes, sir, Tom, go ahead. I got to tell you, a frozen pack of hot dogs thrown at you, and that changes your life. Mm-hmm. My old man beat the shit out of me, my sisters, my mom. And look at you. And Jesus Christ. Look at you now. I made it. You no, made it. No, you didn't I mean, make it. I'm not on the radio complaining about a pack of frozen hot dogs. <laughs> Those hot dogs Jesus came Christ. at a very, very uh, high speed. Well, I'm sure they <laughs> Wait a minute. They came Nolan at a high Ryan. speed? There was, was a pack of Nolan eight. Ryan, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was a pack of eight. Here, they they were, uh, were they kosher? They were co- humble. I'm sorry. What did you say, Tom? I'm sorry, Tom. They were Humboldt kosher dogs. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. I said, what is, what is she living with, Nolan Ryan? <laughs> yes, my father, my father right. is Nolan Ryan. And he hurled, he hurled those hot dogs. Yeah. And he says to me, hold on. He says to me to this day, I bring it up. I try to broach the subject with him, try to get past it. And he says, I was aiming for your head. Mm. Now, what were you going to say, Tom? Now, Tom, you know what's terrible is... You say your dad beat your entire family. And, yes. and and why didn't somebody kill him? I don't quite get it. Every movie of the week, Tough somebody love. stands up in a family. This was back in the day. Why didn't you stand up, Tom, and do what you should have done years ago and kill that bastard father of yours? Why, why did, is that why you're depressed now? Because you should have killed your dad? Well, depressed. 
such a strong word. I, I would just call it uh, self-composed at this point in my life. But what, no, what do you I do would, for a I living? Just, no. a I drive a truck, actually. I drive uh, chemical tankers all over the United States. Do you have road rage because of your dad? No, not at all. Have not you taken a swing at your wife or your kids? You take a swing at them? I smack my kids, sure. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Your, your You're kids smack. Right. Oh, wait. Wait till Madison throws a fucking pack of hot dogs at her kid one day. Wait. <laughs> So She'll you, you wait a second. You hate the fact that your dad beat the crap out of you, and and but you smack your kids. That that's that's odd to me. How could it be? My daughter's nineteen. I've smacked her twice in her life, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then I got a seventeen-year-old boy. Where did you smack the daughter? Where did you give her? On the ass. Well, the one time on the ass, and one time in the middle of her back. You hit her right in the middle of her back. Did did, right. did she did she bend her back and lose her breath? That's why I remember like yeah. that. You hit her in the middle. What had she done yeah, that she deserved back. to be hit in the middle of her back? By Is that the last time she brought a black guy to the house? <laughs> She was about 13 years old. We had an argument. Yeah. And I was in the kitchen. I was cooking dinner. Told her, you know, go to your room. Oh, as she walks by me, she decides to give me a forearm shiver to my back. So what I a wonderful family. What a wonderful Whoa, family. What? You know what? They're all, you know where they live in the dog pound there in Cleveland? You know that? A forearm shiver. A forearm shiver is no, like a, for, a forearm that, you leave, that leaves your body. Yeah. yeah, like that. Why did she do that? Because she was pissed off at me. Maybe she saw old home videos of Grandpa. Well, now, wait a minute now. Hold it one second. Does your daughter claim to be screwed up because you hit her in the middle of her back with your with your fist or your open palm? or? I opened with the back of my hand. She's actually my stepdaughter. Oh, well, of course. Oh. Wow. Hey, Tom. Tom, let's stop this conversation now. Who cares? When you hit your stepkid, who cares? When you, right diddle, or wrong. When you diddle them, then we'll sure. care. Yeah, when, just don't hit her with your penis. You know what? You know what lions do when lions come into the new area, right. the new pride. They kill the children of the female lion, right, Aww. and get rid of all the old blood of the guy that they are replacing. That's their version of no child left behind. That's their right. version right. Right. of hitting a step kid in the bag. No child left behind. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I just got That's it. So wonderful. I just got it, Thank Mr. You. Wonderful, Thank Mr. Nasal. <laughs> uh, so is she screwed up because of this, Tom? Is she messed up, the stepdaughter? Well, first of all, her dad abandoned her. She's a stripper. Yes, the dad lives in Italy. The da- oh, dad off. lives in Italy. Okay, her so he is gone. Harmony. And, 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 and her, na- her name is Harmony? Harmony. She's, She's on main stage right now, Jay. Well, now, put her on the phone. does she hate you and her dad? No, no she tells me she loves me. Oh, okay. Actually, when we talk on the phone and everything. Well, that's probably uh, fear of being struck if she doesn't love you. Or right? she's kinky. The only thing I think that she may do to pay me back is her boyfriend. I you know, 20, 24 year old felon, Ooh. you know, the whole nine yards. What did he do? What sort of felony? I love when they bring the felons home. What was his felony? Home invasion. You love home, invasion. Home, home invasion. He's home a guy invasion. that broke into a home and stole things. Did he slap the people around before he left? Yeah, a couple of his buddies did, actually, wow. yeah. And what? why does she love him? I think because he's a mess. He's what? I think, I think because he's such a mess. She wants to fix him like uh, my wife fixed me. Uh, were you a felon? You were a felon also. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just a mess. A lot mm. of drinking. I, never, I was never physically abusive, but I did a lot of drinking, a lot of running around. It's interesting. Okay. Women always want to fix a guy, but I'm, you know, slightly yeah. a mess. A lot of this is amped up for the radio. <laughs> Shut up. You want to know why nobody yeah. wants to fix you? Why does nobody want to fix <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because guys shut up eventually. That's why. Well, guys aren't oh, into the whole fix They do. Upper. Guys shut up. They, they, they're they a mess, but they don't talk about it all the time, but unless guys, they're guys, Jewish. Guys aren't looking for a project like chicks are. Guys yeah. are not into, you know, we'll flip a house. We ain't looking to flip right. a chick. <laughs> All right. No, I just want to be treated nice and have a good laugh and some. Oh, good sex. sure. I'll oh, be yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, you, know. you don't want to. You don't want to date people that are on your level. You're trying to date people that are above your level. No. Yes. I date people. You always, want young, handsome me. guys. Yeah. Well, that's you, that. That would be like me wanting young, beautiful women. How that's d- how not dare t- you? That's not who you get. That, how, I've gotten. No, you, n- I've gotten. But they don't stay with you. You want to keep? I've yes, I've. You want a stay. normal looking guy that goes to some job that's who's not some young, no body fat punk. I just want a guy who's introspective and funny and nice. Listen. Step out of it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tom. Tom not will someone struck cold his daughter in the detached. middle. Of, struck his daughter Listen, in the middle like of her Jake back. Thomas. Listen to me. We, I would love to be able. Shuli and I have good. Shuli and I, in a perfect world, could date because we have good conversations. The thing is, he smokes so much pot. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you'd be. You know what? A lot of you could. You know too. what you could do. 
You could fix him. He's a mess. He's yeah, a man's a mess. I've actually been fixed quite a bit. He so once hit himself in the middle of his no, back I, with his I, own I fist. Actually, uh, <laughs> you know what? No, Shuli and I have had introspective, deep conversations. He's a, this is a great guy. You right need here. to meet a, a desperate guy. guy who's as desperate as you, and then you both just give up your desperate. Why do you hurt? Why do you want to hurt me? Because I'm not hurting of your you. Interview with what? Dr. Phil is that is that why is that why you're hurting yeah, me? Yeah, you know what? I was uh, when you were talking about it last night. I was a loaded also i watched that and i was laughing so hard i was crying when i was on dr phil with my illegitimate son you were laughing freaking monologue it's like and now jay thomas will perform from the play my bastard son (laughs) and then you do the monologue that happens to be what's going on right now that i'm traipsing around the country with my bastard do you know we're on the today show today also going with you the same story that we're gonna so here's the other thing they call up and they go we'd like you and jt on the today show and I forgot I I, was, I forgot I do this show, so I was going to be there with Meredith Vieira and uh, what's the other guy? The uh, the ball headed guy uh, with the uh, Victoria's Wilker? Secret model? No, the oh, uh, Lauer, Matt, Matt Lauer. Lauer. And I thought, okay, that'll be cool. I call back and go, oh God, you know what? I do the Howard Stern show uh, seven to uh, ten a.m. in the in the morning. They go, well, that's okay. Kathy Lee's on at ten. You can Ray! join her. And I really did. I would like I couldn't say that's awesome. Can you? <laughs> is, can you? <laughs> I couldn't say I didn't want to do it with her. I, but How about you just keep bringing us up as a kid and just be like, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, Here's yeah. my real just son. new new people. So, so, all right. right. Shuli and I are coming over there. You do you know. have her uh, drinking on the show a little bit? You don't have that. Somebody said, you know, they had that. Okay. Uh, let's go to Jason of Baltimore. Jason, it's the Jay Thomas Show. We'll have an Indian guy come on in a few minutes. He is going to explain the economy to us. He is a uh, internationally known astro numerologist and a gesture reader. And he consults with many celebrities and Indian politicians. He knew that George Bush would be in office, and he will tell us who will win the election, and he will predict, he, he will tell us about this current economic problem, and and uh, everything is outsourced to India, so I thought the explanation for the economy... He is, looks like the guy that took me to LaGuardia <laughs> last week. <That's> a, <laughs> uh, yes, Jason, go ahead. Yes, sir. Nice. Hello. Good day, Jay. How you doing? Uh, hey, Shirley. Hey, buddy. Hey. Uh, I'm probably your uh, only Australian listener. I remember hey, uh, you sound guy. like that gecko, um, that gecko, that um, you know, that little yeah, frog. Is that a little frog? No, it's a gecko. Uh-huh. It's a gecko. Mm-hmm. A gecko. I think he's supposed to be English. Yes, I don't. You I, know what? You're we, right. We, you're right. Once yes. you start with the accent, we don't know. We don't know English. We don't know New Zealand. We don't know the difference. Oh, I, I get asked all the time: Am I Irish? Am I Scottish? Right. Yeah, love love this show. Listen mm. to you guys every Friday. Mm-hmm. I uh, don't miss the Howard's not on Friday with you guys on. All right. Great. Well, thank you. Well, thanks sir. a lot. That's wonderful. Hey, um, I was wondering, like Madison said earlier, she's uh, having sex this weekend. Does she have someone in mind already, or is she yeah, yeah, that, that's that's you know what. That's a great question that I was going to ask earlier. You have someone in mind, but you want to be anesthetized before you have the sex. Now, what does that mean? Is it, is it someone you're just going to have to have it with? Or? Um, there's a guy who I used to work with, and mm-hmm. we're always very attracted together, attracted to each other. You we, do. You sound completely drunk. We had sex a few years back, mm-hmm. and then I had a boyfriend, and he had a girlfriend, and then... Uh, it's a comeback together thing. He found me on Facebook, and we're, we have a great time together. He's a lot of fun. He's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Very, very is he serious. young and handsome? And yes, I see. He's younger than I you. I emailed him the other day because a few years ago I had emailed him his first ever email booty call. He's like, anytime you want to do that again. And I'm so thinking, that's what you're doing tonight. I don't tonight. really want casual. I don't want casual sex anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't want it. When you break that to him, I just want you to just record his uh, expression. No, no, that's I'll it. have sex with him. You will. Oh yeah, he's really cute. And so, so when do you have it? Do you have it before it'll you be leave? Like the, Saturday night. Probably. Do you go out for a long time? Yeah, I'll probably be, he. I'll probably be out. And and then and you'll then rub against him, each. I'm going to slip in my voiceover demo because he's with a pretty good agent. Oh come on. <laughs> All right. so, Jason, thank you very much. Jason the Gecko, thank you very nope. much. Thank you. And he's mm-hmm. he's part Indian. This guy. Oh, oh it's all fitting in then. He's, so. not, he's like part Indian, uh, part. Now, does he know he's going to get laid as when the date starts? He knows he's going to get laid. Yes, I emailed him. I said, "Don't I you said, miss those uh, days, Julie? Yeah, you I, do miss those days, oh, don't you? I said I need a booty great. call, and he said, "Here's my schedule." <laughs> Instead of knowing now, you're not going to get laid, right? That or 
or setting it up when you look at the other Garrett, one. Garrett, do you, uh, do, do you have a, you have a date tonight, Garrett? Yes. Do you know now whether you're going to get laid or not? 95%. He's dating yes. the girl. Oh, you're dating her. Yeah. It's like you your girlfriend. A girlfriend? Yeah. Oh. Get out of oh. here. <laughs> when did that happen? Yeah, it's been a while. Wait, but Jay, <laughs> yeah. I wrote in the email, I said, hey, I think I'm going to need a booty call soon because it's been a while. And I, I get myself off way better than anybody else. But it'd be, it'd be nice just to make out for a while. And, you know, whatever. Diddle. Right, right, right. So I wrote, I just, my only stipulation is that you call me Sarah Palin. So while he's on top of so it, so he wants me to wear the wig and the glasses and everything. But it's not that's not going to happen. It's just a joke. Now, do you really think you're going to meet somebody just screwing around like this? You're not. I don't do this. I don't do this. Yeah, you do it every time yeah. we ask you. I every time we this, talk about it, I haven't it. done this in a while. Really? Yeah. All right. I'm just telling you right I just now. Had my heart broken by someone. So every time we talk to you, somebody's just broken. It your was heart. really broken badly. Yeah, but you know this this like young guy, calls, young guy, oh. younger than you, right? No, handsome guy. Oh, they're always handsome. Okay, that's the problem. It's like dating beautiful women. You don't want that trash. I in your don't. House. I know. Okay, date an ugly guy who will appreciate. Not ugly. I will. Not, not handsome. Yeah. You know, look, uh, my and son, the guy, calls, the guy who and, has the foot fetish, who wants to come on my feet and buy me presents, he's not particularly good looking. The policeman, right? Well, that doesn't the surprise lieutenant, me. Yeah. The lieutenant, yeah. But that's sick. Oh, now has he? Have you let him do that with the the foot? No, fetish? we've messed around, and we went on an. Other date, and I said I gotta, I gotta go upstairs. I, I, and I heard from him the other day, just a text message. But mm-hmm. you know, he doesn't seem to have much time. When you go to the drugstore, does he want to go to the Doctor Scholl section? I haven't done that. With you foreplay. Yet. What are those, those those things that cover your bunions? Does he want that? Uh. All I know is he he wants to he wants to come on my feet, mm-hmm. and then he'll buy me things. We got to talk to like a sex expert to find out what does that mean. We're exactly. gonna ask Pandit Raj a, a Kumar Sharma. That's what it is. We're gonna ask the gesture expert. So, when did he announce that to you? Like, like are you uh, ever okay. having a drink? And On he goes, the first date, I was very normal. I didn't mm-hmm. act like, Wah! Like, people think I do on dates. I didn't. I just was nice. We were laughing, having a nice time. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, so have you been married? We're just talking. But just, just to, you know, getting Regular. You know. And he's like, have you read a foot massage? And I'm like, I know where this is going. I said, oh, God, Like he's going to massage was, your foot, trying, then up your I leg. I was trying and then... not to be so Madison. I was just trying to be regular. You're talking about yourself in the third person. You're trying not to no, be so Madison. No, you know, you know, no, no, no. So mm-hmm. he says... He says, uh, "Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I've had a foot massage. They're really nice." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm into that." And then I said, "Do you, do you have a thing for feet?" And he's like, yes. <laughs> I said, "Oh, okay. I thought you were kind of nice and square and conservative." He's like, "I'm not." I said, "Okay." I said, "Well, I have nice feet. I don't know if I should be telling you this." And so he, he saw my feet, and he's like, "Oh." You showed him your feet. He's like, "I would, I would like to, you know." And he tried to say it in a nice way because he's very, he's kind of. Uh, Catholic. See, the foot fetish is the only fetish you can have that you can actually see something on the first date and not be. You rude. could get a toe, right? Like, like yeah. you know, I'm you a, could I, get a toe. I have a vag fetish, and I can't <laughs> sit across from a chick and be like, "Let me just see it real quick." I Wouldn't you like to meet a woman? You go, "What's your deal?" And she goes, "I have a penis fetish." Yeah, you know, you don't hear that. You're, You're like, just... "Perfect." <laughs> I've been with foot fetishes before. I've told you this. I once had my feet worshipped and got you know paid. Right, right a long time a long ago. Time ago. And then, so... then you put the guy's head in the toilet for a while too. That was a different guy. Oh, two different guys. Yeah, and you got two different for that. jobs. Yeah, I see. But so this guy, he was like, he was like, well, in the past, I've had girlfriends, and I'll, um, I'll, you know, do that on their feet, and then I'll, I'll buy them things, and I'm like, he used the euphemism for coming, called it. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that, and I'm like, and I said kind of loudly, I'm like, you come on their feet and buy them gifts in the in the in oh, the yeah. restaurant. And he went, shh, 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 quiet down. And I said, huh? Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I said, I guess you could do. I, you don't need to buy. Me anything. What's the load gift ratio? Like, well, I know it. Get? It's got to be he'll buy her aqua shoes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you think of nail polish. I mean, what, has he bought you anything yet? No, we've only had two dates. But you'd never let him. Has he sucked your toe? Uh, did he? Boy, I'd remember if you asked me my, that question. My tits a little bit. Okay, well, we well, made out. Do your nipples look like toes? Starts yes. with a T. <laughs> you got those, you know, those eraser head. They're either eraser head or pinky. Uh, or what are the well, little toe looking nipples, yeah. you know? So. No, but he, you know he was. Uh... Do you have the hair on top of the nipple like toes have? No, no. He played <laughs> with the nips that? for a few minutes. He wanted to do some stuff with the feet. <laughs> there's like, nothing what? worse. There's nothing worse than going to suck on a chick's tit and then you're flossing. Like <laughs> I don't know. 
No, that's just We're going to have to call Indy in a couple of minutes. I don't think he's listening. Mary God. Jane of New York. It's the Jay Thomas Show. I love uh, Mary Good morning, Jane. Mary Jane. How, what a fabulous name, Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. How are you? Hi, Jay. How, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Listen, you're, you're going from so many topics. I've got comments. <laughs> has anybody ever... What's the strangest thing a man has wanted to do with you, uh, Mary Ann? You're talking... Uh, you're Mary having a Jane. nice dinner, Mary Jane. You're talking. You're having a nice meal, and the man uh, announces his sexual preference. What, what would be the most unusual thing? Hey, goodness gracious! I haven't been asked that. No, I'm just wondering. Um, I mean, has a guy ever wanted to come on your feet? Well, you know, suck the toes, do my toenails. Do your uh, toenails? You mean oh, give, yeah. give your pedicure? Mm. Yep. You mean get the equipment out? Do they have the little bag? Do they carry the little <laughs> the little black thing? Oh, the big toenail I would clipper thing. That. that would be hot. Yeah. With the you, scraper, the callus scraper. You would supply it. Yeah. Feels fabulous. Or a Korean woman. Right. So you would sit on the on, in the living room, and he would put the cotton between your toes, and he would just you know do your do your your toes for you. Well, not the cotton, but just you know you have that little thing you put in between. It's like a. Mm. You know, you put it in between your toes, and they just mm -hmm. work on your toes. Well, here's the weird thing. Whenever you get your toes done, and they dig in there, and they get that dirt that's in the big toe, that stinks when it comes out. You know, when they dig it, that's a toe cheese. You know, <laughs> you know. so if you know what I'm saying? Either you're going to do the toe, or you're going to toe jam. Well, if your yeah. toenails aren't long enough, you, you cut the toenail and file it, then there won't be anything for them to dig. I see. Well, we don't talk about that. This okay. is gross. Can we get back to coming on things? All right. <laughs> Uh, Mary Jane, uh, we're moving off of that before we talk to Indy and find out what's going on with the economy. Yes, go ahead. I wanted to make a comment about the voiceovers because I'm a full-time person in the field of education, and um, I also do voiceovers part-time. And I really Well, what's one you have running now that we would know? Oh, yeah. you got to go. Well, I don't know if I should even say the website on it. No, no, not the website. Just give us a commercial that we'll be uh, in the car listening to or maybe here on Sirius Satellite. What would your voice be on? Uh, well, this would be a commercial on a website because I've done this website voiceover. So, I don't so it's know. meaning. Your career is meaningless. Anything that's on a website or anything that's on the Internet is absolutely meaningless. I, I was with a guy yesterday. He's starting an Internet radio company, and I wanted to say to him, why are you starting something meaningless? So you have a commercial running you, you didn't get any money for. Absolutely. That's right. what I was saying. Then you're not in the voiceover no. business. You're not in the voiceover business. Yeah. I just do it part-time, but I'm With the voice like you have now? You... Oh, let her alone. Come on. It's horrible. You sound like the, fam the wife and family guy, but go ahead, Mary Jane. <laughs> Thank you. a great laugh, though. Yeah, you All should right, do laugh over. You should do scary I movies. Gotta... <laughs> All right, hurry up because we got a, the the Indian guy is about you know, to. He's almost through his lentil soup, and we got to call him. Go okay, ahead. Well, I just wanted to say that it's a very difficult business, and you know, I work in the field of education, and this guy that's beating his stepdaughter that pisses me off. Okay. All right, I thank you. Some yeah, fucked uh, up head. All, All right, right, thank, thank you, Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. There thank you go. You. Okay, so she's in the education business. She's a failed voiceover person, and she doesn't like people striking. I'm Mary daughter. Jane. I'm here to talk to you about. Stay water. where you are, Pandit Raj Kumar Sharma. We'll call. Is it going to be hard to get him in India, Sean Kelly, executive? What time is it in India? We'll find out all of that. And if I was Good here, question. he could tell us the weather. All in right, India. Madison is here. Shuli is here. Uh, Garrett Andrews is at the controls along with Sean Kelly, and it's Howard one hundred one. You're listening to the Jay Thomas Show. Call eight 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 Stern one hundred one. We'll be back with more of the Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas Show. On Howard 101. Around the world. Then up your block. It's time for America to break up. No more bullshit. This is it. It's a revolution. This is a Howard 100 News Brief. I'm Ralph Howard. It's a dilemma at a rock show. Do you fight your way to a bathroom or simply pee your pants? Thanks to the Stern Show, Richard Christie has the answer. It's Howard 100 News Backstage. Howard 100 News. News. Backstage. I've got three adult diapers, one for each night of the concert I'm going to. Richard Christie doesn't want to miss a drumbeat of the three Coheed and Cambria concerts he's going to, so he'll be wearing a diaper. I didn't wear one last night at the concert and about pissed my pants. I didn't want to pee my pants again, so tonight I'm Isn't prepared. Is there a bathroom? Tomorrow. Yeah, but where I like to watch at this venue is on the third floor and the bathroom's on the first floor, so 
It's a hassle. I'm not going to miss the songs, and I'm not going to not drink beer. So, but Don't you feel the wetness and the weight of your pee? No, these are really absorbent. When I did it on the air, it actually felt great. I'm looking forward to being an old man and pissing my pants. If I keep my cool and just pee on a regular basis, not all at once, then it should absorb everything. It should be fine. Richard claims he's not being weird. Just being courteous. I'm just being prepared and being courteous to other people by pissing in a diaper rather than just in my jeans. For Howard 100 News, I'm Lisa G. We dare not forget today that we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth. It's a revolution. The torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. Revolution has started. Howard 100 News, putting the fist to good use. For serious traffic and weather on demand, go to channels 148 to 158. And for XM traffic and weather on demand, channels 210 to 230. Listen to Howard Stern on the job online on Sirius Internet Radio. Details at Sirius.com. Another Howard 100 News brief at the top of the hour, or as close as we can get. I'm Noel Biederman, president of AshleyMadison.com. Ashley Madison is the world's largest dating service of its kind, catering to men and women who are currently in relationships but are looking for more. Many of you have heard our ads. Over two and a half million of you have joined our service, and some are still wondering if Ashley Madison is right for them. That's up to you to decide. But if you are living a life of quiet despair, then you need to visit AshleyMadison.com. Every 20 seconds, somebody new joins Ashley Madison looking to have a discreet affair. So rest assured, you are not alone. I am so confident that my service is right for you, that if you sign up today, I will guarantee you an affair to remember. That's right. Sign up right now and experience an affair to remember, or I will give you your money back, no questions asked. For seven years now, Ashley Madison has been connecting millions of people, from Alaska to the not-so-Virgin Islands. Our website is 100% secure, completely anonymous, and now absolutely risk-free. AshleyMadison.com. Affairs guaranteed. If the IRS tells you that you still owe back taxes, what can you do? Or if the state tax collector threatens you with wage garnishments, penalties, or seizures, what are your options? As an honest, hard-working American, you do have rights. If you owe the IRS or state at least $15,000, call American Tax Relief. They've helped thousands of people, like you, eliminate up to 85% of their delinquent taxes. Just call 800-622-5651. If you qualify, American Tax Relief can settle your tax debts for less than you owe. Remove penalties and interest and get the collector off your case. Don't let your tax problem get worse. Call American Tax Relief for a free consultation and see how much money they can save you. Call 800-622-5651. If you qualify, you can save up to 85% on the taxes you owe. Call right now. 800-622-5651. That's 800-622-5651. Attention migraine sufferers. Do you suffer from migraine or tension headaches? Is the pain unbearable? Do your pills aggravate your nausea? Have you ever wished for faster relief? Well, your wish has finally been answered. It's now possible to stop migraine suffering in minutes rather than hours or days. That's right. It's now possible to stop migraine suffering in just minutes. It's called Dr. Heisen's Headache System, and it will change your life. Developed by board-certified neurologist Dr. Morton Heisen, it's easy to use and clinically shown to relieve migraine pain without pills, shots, or a prescription. Previously available only to his patients, Dr. Heisen's headache system is now available directly for the first time. Stop the throbbing. Stop the pounding. Stop the nausea in just minutes with the revolutionary Heisen headache system. Real relief is finally here for all migraine and tension headache sufferers. Call 800-338-6251 to put an end to your migraine suffering. Call 1-800-338-6251. That's 800-338-6251 for real relief in minutes guaranteed or your money back. Call 1-800-338-6251. Again, 1-800-338-6251. You're listening to The Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. We're back with more of The Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas Show on Howard 101. Many people say, where do you come from? Well, uh, in the afternoons, I'm on Sirius uh, Stars 102 from uh, 3 until 6 o'clock Eastern Time. 
and uh, you know, back on uh, uh, today also. And then they rerun uh, that show from midnight to three Eastern time, and I believe they rerun this show from Howard One Hundred One on Saturday night. I, I think, think so, yeah. What does that mean when you hold up the fingers like that? Does it mean at eight? From eight to eleven. I believe so. Somebody the heard evening. the replay and he was like, I tried to call in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's a, that's a fan of mine yeah, right there. Fan of mine. Uh that's right. Uh so when you hear something late at night it means we're not there, okay? <laughs> and then on Saturday mornings I play uh seventies music from uh, uh eight until noon, a big the big uh spectacular 70s show and that the people at that channel they hate my guts it's like your fan club they absolutely hate my guts oh yeah jake thomas fans yeah. on myspace yeah go to yeah i have nine fans on myspace you know they're all uh, sick of you you know you go to, you go to howard's the thing it's a two million hits i have i've had myspace up for like four years i've had 2100 hits in four years jay has plenty Not of in room a month. yeah plenty yeah, of room jay has plenty of room in his space uh, MySpace, by the way, I, it's just enemies. I don't have any friends on MySpace. Uh, and also go to jthomas.com. And for the election, we have Obami the Kami. And you know what's been selling? The Obami the Kami bumper stickers. Ah. You can make a bumper sticker. You can have McCain get off my lawn. You can have V-Pilf, uh, Sarah Pill, and make a T-shirt, make a dog sweater. We should really make a bumper sticker for the truck drivers that throw the, the piss uh, bottles out the window. How's my piss throwing? one <laughs> You know, and Let's the do Jay it. Thomas number. Absolutely. We'll do it. Yeah. And you know what? That's, that's a great idea. Th My I, God. Thank I've you. I've had one. No. You are not going to believe this because we are, we're going to, uh, India. And, um, good, good morning, Mr. Sharma. It's the Jay Thomas show, uh, back in the United States and all over the world, even on the internet. How are you, Mr. Sharma? I'm very fine, Jay Thomas. How are you doing? Good morning to you. Good morning. Let me get your name correct first. Uh, Pandit Raj Kumar Sharma. As is that how you say it? Yes, that's absolutely fine. My name is Pandit Raj Kumar Sharma. Absolutely good, good. fine. I li I'd like you to meet the people that are with me uh, here. Uh, is this your first time on American radio? Oh, yes, I'm absolutely first time on American radio. Once upon a time, long back, two and a half years back, I was, I, I was mm, taken a bite for, uh, you know, two, three years back for, mm -hmm. by Sky TV, but never on radio. Okay, good. Uh, Your we, English is excellent. Excellent. We, have, we nice. have Madison here. We have Shuley with Hello. us also. These, uh, you know. Now, now, what we talk Hi, about... Hi, guys. Hi. How are Hello. you? Uh, Hello. 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 Mr. Sharma. Mr. Sharma. Uh, right. You're making me hungry for some roti and some chicken tikka masala right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. you go. I just I want a Slurpee, but that's just I'm me. Starving. Now, Now, we are calling... it. What uh, Here in the United States, in New York City, it's almost 8 a.m. What time is it there? Are you in Delhi, India? No, I'm very much in... Bombay and uh, very much, very much I Bombay. have a um, time at 5:30 in Bombay and uh, five, Bombay the afternoon. 5:20 in the afternoon. No, five yeah, five thirty in the afternoon, and we are heading towards evening. You can say and. Uh, uh, it is a financial capital of India, though the finance is collapsing and the world's economy is collapsing everywhere, and right. we have got a very bad day in the market. Mm. Since, you're, so it, since you're in the future... He just said it. Yeah, since you're in the future, what happens later today? Because we're not He at just five. said it. Oh. He just said the yeah. market collapsed oh, Jesus. already. Oh, no. Their market You are such collapsed. a stoner. You Our even, market hasn't collapsed yet. Our market hasn't opened yet. Right. He's telling so, you it's going to happen. So, so, Pun, uh, Pandit, uh, Pandit it's in the future. we always ask people, when we speak to people all over the world, you've already lived, you know, uh, you know, seven hours longer than we have. You're in the future right now. And you're telling us that in your area, uh, in, in India, the market is, is, is falling apart already. It's falling. Yes, it was 10% down circuit in Indian market. Bombay Stock Exchange was 10% down today. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. So yes. that's going to happen to us as soon as everybody gets to Wall Street this morning. Our economy will, will, will collapse again. You, uh, I don't know whether you have gone to my profile or not, but you, you know, in the month of Feb uh, February and March, on 14th of February and 24th of April, 
2008, when Saturn went into Leo, I predicted very clearly that in 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 all over the world, Dow Jones, let it be Dow Jones, let it be Nasdaq, let it be New York Stock Exchange, let it be any European market or Asian market, will have 50 percent fall in the Ooh. future. You predicted so, this in March and April when the moon was yes, in something. When the moon. Yes, now, yes, now, yes. now, that's why you're here. Everything in the okay. United States has been sent to India. Every when we mm. call to make a reservation, uh, 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 Indian person answers the phone, and 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 so I decided let's not speak to anybody from the United States. Let's go where people think the money has ended up, and so that's why we have Pandit Raj Kumar Sharma. You are a, a, a numerologist and a gesture reader, and you predicted it. Now here we are this morning. Yeah, how do you gesture read? <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll go into gesture right. reading in a moment. What is your prediction? From this moment on, first of all, the election we're about to have. Who do you see? Oh, yeah, who do you see? That's very great of you. If you visit my site or visit my um, uh, my profile in in the internet, you will come to know that I have predicted about, uh, predicted about Obama, uh, Barack Obama two and a half years back. And I have wait a minute, predicted... two and a half years ago, he wasn't even running. How did you know it was going to be? Barack Obama, Mr. Sharma. Oh, Barack Obama was uh, then in the month of January 2007. I have predicted because I keep an eye and keep a track on all international people who are going to be the candidate for any such for, um, such seat which is going to be internationally known. You didn't say <laughs> suck feet just now, did you? In the year 2004, even uh, about the no. uh, between between Mr. Kerry and Mr. Bush, right. there also I predicted that Mr. Kerry will be losing this election right. and will be making a phone call. In the same way, I have a horoscope of Mr. Barack Obama. He's born on 4-8-1961. And uh, John McCain was born on 29th of 1936. Okay. So hey. I have studied there. By the way, go to PanditRajKumarSharma.com and you find out more about tell us what the economy it's terrible here now unemployment people are broke uh you live in india where we sent billions of dollars what do you see for the future of the american economy and also who's going to be in the super bowl this we'll year we'll do the super bowl oh, next yeah. yes what do you think of the american economy yeah at this moment uh, it is very clear that saturn which is called dragon in the indian astrology when we talk about nine stars It is very clear that Saturn is at this moment. We're losing. No, it's not clear. We're His losing. Connection. Sean, Sean, we're losing him. Sean, get in. We might have more. to redial him. We might have He's to about do. to give us a prediction here, and it's breaking up. Can well, we redial you? Maybe. Can we real? We, Mr. Sharma, can we redial you before you give us your prediction? Yeah. Okay, Sean, let's redial him. He's about to give us a prediction. That's the move they all do, by the way. This, they, they. Well, no. They all kidding sure aside, down isn't it like, almost like in a film, right when you're about to hear the who the killer is? You yeah. Know, Uh, well, said, yeah. I predict in and then two weeks from now, and then two weeks yeah. from now he's going to go. I told you. Yeah. Well, he's already said that three nah. times about right. all that. So, so I like when you go. Did you say suck feet? And he goes in 2011. Just That's totally exactly ignored. When you call United Airlines or the credit cards or yeah. whatever, and you get angry at them. Mm-hmm. They don't deal with it. I don't know if that's their their culture or whatever, but they don't. There's no negatives. No, they. I've never. been very fortunate. I have not run into any rude Man. customer but service. He's so right. I haven't run into any Indian people. On I've had you I know haven't. we got this new phone hooked up at our place, and literally five minutes after it's hooked up, the telemarketers start calling. Right. Right. And and I've had a few Indian <laughs> telemarketers, and and as soon as they start talking, I go, I'm not interested. Thank you. And they go, Thank you, sir. Have a good night. And they hang up. Mm -hmm. Two nights ago, this guy calls <clears> me up, and he goes. May I speak to you, Sh uh, Sh uh, <laughs> yeah. And I go, speaking. Yeah, I'm with uh, such and such, and we're... Uh, and I go, listen, buddy, I, I appreciate the offer, but uh, I'm not interested. Can I just finish? Oh, I hate ah. it. I hate and I go, I go, dude, I just, I'm asking you nicely. I'm not interested. Let me just finish. Cuts me off. And I go, you know what, ass? And I start yelling at him. I'm like, listen, you motherfucker. It's 6.30 at night. I'm just got home. And you're going to call me and bother me with this shit? What's your number? Let me call you at your house when you're eating dinner and bug you about something you don't mm -hmm. fucking need. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, and then he goes, thanks for your time, Shuli. And hangs up on me. <laughs> like you fucking knew my name the whole time oh, or something. Oh, he got it right at the end. Yeah. Did he say Baba Booey? <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, it smells like a crank call. Dick. It'd be funny if this Indian guy called up and went, Bubba Booey, Bubba Booey. <laughs> that would well, make me laugh. Uh, he also is a gesture reader, so we'll ask him about gestures, but I want to hear his call for um, uh, for the economy. Mm-hmm. And he claims that uh, he, he only does the economy by astrology. He doesn't do it like, doesn't look at numbers, just does it by astrology like mm-hmm. that. At this um, point, anything will work. Mark in Portland, Oregon, are you uh, in uh, uh, anticipation of this uh, a reading of our economy? and what we ought to be investing in in just a couple of moments here. Oh, I can't wait, Jay. How you doing, truly? <laughs> I'm good, buddy. I can't wait. And uh, by the way, uh, Madison? Yes. Wham! My dad threw a hot dog down. I mean, wham! <laughs> All right, get him off the air. Like, get, him off the air. get him off the air. We're not going to have fun. <laughs> Bye-bye. That's right. Bye Let's now. go back to Mr. Sharma. Is he back, uh, Sean Kelly? <laughs> All right, we're back. Uh, Mr. Sharma, welcome back to the Jay Thomas Show at Howard 101. You were just about to make a prediction from India. You're already in the future. Uh, can you hear us now? <laughs> yes, yes, I can hear you. Ah, you All right. Much better. Give sir. us the prediction and go to PanditRajKumarSharma.com. Go to JayThomas.com and we'll have that for you. Uh, so uh, you've looked at the economy. Uh, do, does the economy have a birth date? Uh, can you see it astrologically? How do you work it? No, no. You know, when we talk about cosmic energy, we have got nine stars in the, uh, 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 you know, nine planets all over the world. Mm -hmm. When we talk about nine planets, we have very major planets, which is called Saturn. Jupiter, mm-hmm. Venus, mm-hmm. Mars, all these planets. What about are what about my favorite Uranus? Uranus, Uranus. We uh, in Indian astrology we don't consider Uranus as a star. Please mm. mind it. You know something? Uh, I so I we. looked at I looked at Uranus on a uh, on a uh, telescope and I saw what looked like a huge pimple on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He gets the that joke. That's universal. It. That's it's it. Universal. Gets the joke. Is that the same joke over there? Someone <laughs> says Uranus and everybody starts laughing in India. Huh? Yeah, that well, that, that must English. be a 16-year-old beautiful girl which you are watching. It's not a... Not oh! Oh! <laughs> Randit, no, Pandit! 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 Pandit is yes, now on... Son of a bitch. Uh, now on Howard 101. Yes, Pandit. Son of a bitch. Now, Pandit, you are now... Uh, you're, you're now now with us now you know how we're doing this uh, oh, yes, yes. do you have do you have the nor- the naughty morning shows there in india you wake up in in mumbai and there's a naughty morning show it's the you know you have like the the silly the silly djs in the morning or the talk show hosts yeah i heard a lot about you and i really respect you because you have been working very hard on on all this media and uh, programs you know mm-hmm. no let me predict something sure. very important Go for ahead. the people who are listening you know, at this moment, we uh, we were talking about Saturn, you know. Saturn is the most important star which plays all about the economy in the world. Let Saturn. us talk about metals, mm-hmm. talk about oil, talk about gold, silver, mm-hmm. iron, metal, and economy. Is that what we ought to be buying, is all of those things? Gold, metal, iron, all those things? Yeah, you can note down my predictions, which are very important. I have been tracking this market for the last 22 years. Mm-hmm. Let, it be, let it be Dow Jones, let it be Nasdaq. Okay. And there are uh, uh, no... Dow Jones, Sa- Nasdaq. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, uh, you know, Jay and my all my friends who are sitting in the boardroom, one thing is very important, Saturn is placed in Leo. Mm. And when it came into Leo, the market, do- let us talk about Dow do- Jones, because do- you are sitting in New York and we are talking about economy all over the world. If America is affected, mm-hmm. the whole world is affected. So when we talk about Saturn living in, uh, placed in Leo, mm-hmm. it means it is sitting in an enemy's house, which is called Sun. Sun is an enemy of Saturn. So they are sitting together in one house till April 2009. Oh, come and, on. We're going to be uh, in the crapper. Oh, yeah. Saturn is in the wrong house until 2009, April. So yeah. nothing good is going to happen for, um, uh, well, how many months is that? Let's see. Uh uh, One, two, three, four, five, five, six months more to go. You months. are a numerologist. Yeah, you're unbelievable. Well, you knew that the, this economy is it's not going to fix immediately. It's but no take one some had time. picked a month. No one. No so one. in April. So should we buy now or do we wait till April to buy? Is it going to go lower than this? Dow Do was sixteen thousand, and now Dow is roaming around somewhere between eight thousand five hundred to nine thousand. When should and we start buying again? We should start buying only after twenty fourth of 
uh, December. Uh, only then after they, Christmas, okay. After really? Christmas. Uh, only after Christmas because after the Christmas there could be some some recovery in the market, but then the volatility is not going to be over. Mm -hmm. You must remember volatility is not going to be over. But one good news is that we are watching oil coming down to $66 per barrel in the international market. Mm -hmm. And gold, we are watching very clearly $720 from $900 to $720. So people who are going to celebrate Christmas by gifting their girlfriends and their wives, they can buy a beautiful pendant of gold and give it to them. Ladies and gentlemen, Pandit <laughs> Raj Kumar Sharma. Uh, go to PanditRajKumarSharma.com, and he's very much in uh, Mumbai. And uh, and by the way, uh, you do it by the stars. And do you do you look at economy, or you just do it through astrology? What you're doing? No, see, astrology and numerology is one of the most important part. Now there might be few listeners mm -hmm. who does not believe in astrology. But right? They, you know what they say? It's a bunch of hooey. Who? Yes. Bunch of people. bunch of voodoo. Bunch of voodoo. Bunch of nonsense. People would say. What other word would they say, Madison? Hooey, voodoo, nonsense, hogwash, hogwash, crap, crapola, mm -hmm. crap. Do you say crapola in India? Uh, some people say that. They say oh, crapola. They say crapola. You probably have an Indian word for it. Yeah. What's the Indian word for for nonsense when people make fun of what you do for a living? What do they say to you? Uh, faltu. Faltu. A bunch yes. of faltu. What does that mean? Is that <laughs> faltu? Faltu. Now, but now, like that, you know, like what do you say to those people when they say you're full of faltu? Uh, faltu means uh, baseless. Baseless, right, right. Yes. So, so now, uh, Jay, yeah. you, uh, I, I just want to correct you. My one, my website is solutionastrology.com. Oh, what is it called? Solutionastrology.com. Oh, solutionastrology.com. Dot com. Uh, dot com. Can okay. You, can you will see the That's a lot easier than yeah. Punjab. Pandit, Raj, can, Pandit, can, you, can you pick some stocks for us, maybe, to um, invest in? Any of the stars telling you that the Steelers are in the Super Bowl oh, this year? Oh, yes. You know, the uh, Jupiter at this moment is running in the uh, ninth house. Ninth house is, means Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. It is running in this own house. And Venus is going, Venus is transferred into mm -hmm. um, Scorpio. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so everything will be fine. So do we buy GM? Yeah, just what, give us a, just give us something to buy. Give us something to buy. Uh, I'm sorry. Give us a, a, a stock, stock. A stock, stock you like. Stock. Mm -hmm. a stock. Uh, you mean? Huh? You know, like a stock. Like yeah. give us the name of a company that we can buy this that is, will make us rich. This is when it all oh. went horribly mm. wrong. Here we you go. You can buy. You can buy a script of any banking sector because banks. I remember banks. Banking. The yeah, banks, banks are going, but the banks are going under. No, huh? but they're 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 they're. Um, you you they're being... you buy the script which is which which has taken Freddie and Franny and Lehman Brothers. You <laughs> buy a city city bank. City. Oh, city bank. Yes. City. Oh, okay. City okay. is a good one. You buy Bank of America. You buy General Electrical. You Key Corp. Corp. General Corp. Electrical. Key Corp. I, there you go. Wow. Key Corp. I love this. Well, thank. Now, here's the thing I wanted to ask you. We move off the economy for a moment. You're also a gesture uh, reader. You, you read gestures, right? I love yes. that. Now, now, um, what sort of gestures should we look for? Like, like when a person crosses their arms. I've always been told that. They're closing themselves off. Is that correct? No. If oh. you talk about gesture, then we need to have a TV show for that. I should be there right in front of you to talk about gestures more. We need to fly you over. Yes, we do. I India. think so. And okay. one thing more. Or you can send me important. over with a video camera. Sean, call, it, call the uh, front office. Tell them we're going to fly <laughs> uh, <laughs> pun, uh, pun, 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 Pandit over Pandit. here. Pandit over here. So, so when you're talking to someone, you know yes. the gestures. You can tell I'm right away. If, gesture, you know? Yes. Uh, you, yeah. Well, you can tell right away they're lying. What's a gesture that that shows lying just give it, even though we can't see you what would a, a gesture be that you we would look for for a liar for a liar mm -hmm. yes a liar will always try to hide his smile you know and try we'll to hide his try. smile yes mm -hmm. you mean like put his hand over his mouth yes. and go like that see? and try to put 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 duplicate smile on his face a duplicate Basi smile yes basically gesture reading reading is a very interesting subject and very fascinating subject in the world mm -hmm. you know your mind commands your tongue. Your mind, I'm writing that down. Your mind commands your, your tongue. Your mind commands your tongue, right? Your mind commands your tongue. And when you talk, talk, your mind and tongue commands your body, your limbs like hands and legs. 
you know, according to Pund- Pundet, P- Pandit, Pandit. Uh, Pandit. Uh, you know, he's saying people who cover their smiles are liars, which tells me that all Asian women are liars when they start laughing and smiling. You ever see Asian women when they, they ha, 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 like yeah. that? Of course, you are absolutely fine, right. 80% of <laughs> might be liars. 80% of Asian women are liars. That's a, I dated one for 11 years, so you're right. Now, what you're saying is, is when you cover your uh, hand with your mouth, your body is literally trying to, to cover keep the, the fact, keep, that, the, lie keep in. the lie inside, so your body is giving away your evil emotions. You know, when you're covering your head, you're covering your face with your hand. Yes. It means, there are two meanings of that gesture. One is that you are shying from somebody to whom you love. Yes. Second is that you are trying to hide your face because you have committed a very big blunder or you, have, you don't want to show your face to anybody. You know what picture is always shown? Whenever the stock market goes down, I'm yeah. sure the same thing in India. They show a guy from the floor of the stock with market his with his, his hands over his face every single time. Over his face and he is keeping both the heads on his face. Uh, forehead and say that, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now, those are easy. What would be a... Well, you know what? I like the covering because sometimes you'll be in a meeting with someone and their hand will come up to their face and they will kind of put their finger near their mouth or their hand. It's a big poker move. They are... Yes, and poker poker also. Now, one last thing. What When when Madison is single, right? She's always looking for a man, uh, Mr. Sharma. What... What... What body language should she look for in a man to know that she can trust the man? See, the body language when a woman is looking for a man is that he should be very secure. Mm-hmm. A person who walks with his two legs right and left, not straight. He, he, she should look for someone that walks sideways. Sideways is that? Sideways. He will be very, very trustworthy. I don't. Believe me. D- nobody walks sideways. Well, sure. Sure. There, there are people. You, there are people. Sideways doesn't mean that they go left and right. And it's right. They there keep, are people. They well. keep their. They keep Hold their. On. They keep Wait, you know, wait, keep... wait one second. We're, you know what? Uh, I, I, I... Mr. Sharma, stay with us, please. Uh, we're going to find out more about the sideways walking. You know, um, I, I got to tell you right now, I, I, am, I am so impressed with you. And let me give your your uh, website He's out again. lovely. We should really have him here. SolutionAstrology.com. Um, we're talking to Pandit Raj Kumar Sharma, first time ever on uh, American uh, radio, international radio. He's been on Germany, everywhere all over the world. He's just said the economy will turn around in April of 2009. He's given us some stock deals, right? Yes. Citibank, Bank of America, GE. General Electrical. He's called all of that. Stay where you are. We'll find out how you can trust a sideways person. On the Jay Thomas <laughs> Show with Madison Shuley and Mr. Sharma at Howard 101. You're listening to the Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. We'll be back with more of the Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas Show on Howard 101. Around the world. Then up your block. It's time for America to wake up. No more bullshit. This is it. It's a revolution. This is a Howard 100 News Brief. I'm Ralph Howard. A case of mistaken identity. And that can happen when you have more than one high pitch. It's Howard 100 News on your side. Howard 100 News on your side. Now, why does Julian Barbary have a problem with me? I have no problem with her. I pitch Eric taking issue in his own eloquent way with recent comments by L.A. Morning TV star and Stern Show friend Jillian Barbary. I have a bone to pick with that fucking bitch cunt whore. What on earth could Jillian Barbary have said to provoke such vile vitriol? I mean, she's nothing but a fucking little bitch cunt that should keep her mouth shut. Howard 100 100 News attempting to explain to High Pitch Eric that Jillian had in fact gone after High Pitch Mike for his dippy diatribe against her. Barbary saying High Pitch Mike is, quote, the poor man's High Pitch Eric. Uh, well, I thought, I thought she, it sounded like she was. And I would like to get to the top of it. You want to get to the bottom of it, too? Yep. Suddenly, High Pitch Eric apparently listening to a little common sense here. I would apologize to her if she wasn't bad now for me. Right now, she's on my shit list. If she did not bash me, then... I'll, I will take her off my shit list. But this whack packer actually declaring solidarity with his fellow high pitcher. And, uh, you know, she should leave high pitch Mike alone, too. For Jillian Barbary, like so many, eager to be a part of the Stern Show, be careful what you wish for. I mean, yeah, can't you keep her mouth shut? For Howard 100 News, I'm Steve Lyon. Howard 100 News. If you have a speech impediment... Let him 
We'll be there. For serious traffic and weather on demand, go to channels 148 to 158. And for XM traffic and weather on demand, go to channels 210 through 230. When you spot news about The Stern Show, email Howard One Hundred News at Sirius-Radio.com or call 877-33-SERIOUS and go to 100 for the Howard One Hundred News tip line. Another Howard One Hundred News brief at the top of the hour or as close as we can get. The Howard 100 News Week in Review. This week, who makes the cut for Howard's dinner? Me, That's you, a fun Fred, and Phelan. Phelan. What about J.D.? Cheech and Chong visit Howard. Is that fair to Cheech, though? I don't, I don't care that. about Cheech. <laughs> <laughs> Will Riley Martin resign? Uh, I talked to Tim. He said, uh, Nick, I mean, boy, uh, you get a not another die. The Howard 100 News Week in Review. Tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern in Howard 101. Life can be full of risks. One thing you shouldn't take a risk with is your family's health insurance. If you're self-employed or an individual and you need health insurance, you need to make this free call and see how the mega life and health insurance company can help you. They specialize in helping the self-employed and individuals just like you who need flexible health insurance to get it. Don't take risks with your family's health insurance. It's not worth it. If you're self-employed or an individual and you need quality family health insurance, call right now. 866-501-MEGA. 866-501-MEGA. 866-501-6342. Market and plans vary by state. Not licensed in New York. Exclusions and limitations apply. North Richland Hills, Texas. Policy series on file. Association group plans where available require association membership. The following is a message for Sirius subscribers who receive an email or letter from Sirius about your receiver's FM transmitter. To get the best quality sound from your Sirius receiver, use a direct connection. With a direct connection, you can enjoy your 100% commercial free music plus sports, news, talk, and comedy crystal clear coast to coast. For help in changing your receiver to a direct connection, go to Sirius.com slash optimize. That's Sirius.com slash optimize. Or call 1-877-635-5130. Once again, this message is only for Sirius subscribers who receive an email or letter about your receiver's FM transmitter. Richie, I'm so happy to be able to help struggling farmers in small communities through our skincare business, Besuticals Organics. Julie, it's great that we help farming communities by using their fair trade ingredients in our skincare products. Fair trade means these farmers have paid fair wages for their crops so they can afford to improve housing and education in their communities. The cocoa butter we use in our award-winning Beyond Body Balm and Lip Balms comes from the Yakao Project, a community of 600 small organic farms in the Dominican Republic. Because October is Fair Trade Month, we're donating $1 each time we sell a Royal Treatment Face Cream, Queen Bee for a Day Cream, Beeline Free Eye Cream, and our Beyond Body Balm. We are also donating $5 each time we sell a gift set. Our donations go to Transfair USA, the agency that certifies fair trade ingredients in the U.S. Go to healthfromthehive.com. That's healthfromthehive.com. Now give me a big kiss or I'll take your mic away. Now that is not fair. <laughs> Weak stock market, international uncertainty, failing financial institutions, uneasiness. These are all factors that drive investors to the safety of the bond market. With increased demand, bond prices rise, and that causes mortgage rates to fall. Rates are the best they've been in a while. Linux Financial will refinance your mortgage and pay your closing costs down to the last dime. Mortgage management means we'll benchmark that rate and we'll integrate it into your family's personal economy. We'll compare that rate to every investment and every debt you have. If your investments aren't performing, liquidate them and pay that mortgage down. And with no closing costs, it always makes sense. If you're in debt, pull cash out. Pay those debts off. Mortgage interest is deductible. Debt interest isn't. If you need it, we can get you cash out to 95% of your value. And every time rates go down, we'll lower your rate again with no closing cost. If you're the kind of person that qualifies, you shouldn't be paying closing costs ever, period. It's the biggest no-brainer in the history of Earth. Call Linux Financial, 877-829-2197. That's Linux Financial, 877-829-2197. If you know a lot of people and you need to get those contacts organized, you probably need a CardScan contact management system. CardScan captures names, addresses, phone numbers, and more, all in just a few seconds. The software works seamlessly with Outlook, Act, Palm, and Windows mobile devices and smart phones and even your BlackBerry. And now they just introduced CardScan for Mac. CardScan now works on the 
Mac operating system. Call 866-334-4516 or visit Cardscan.com slash Radio 2 and try Cardscan for 30 days, risk-free, or your money back. Cardscan is the best-selling business card reader on the market with online backup, web access, and updates, too. Scan business cards quickly using their sleek scanner or simply drag and drop contact information from email. Cardscan will organize it all and save you from cutting and pasting or typing and now works on a Mac. Call 866-334-4516 or visit Cardscan.com slash Radio 2 and try Cardscan for 30 days risk-free or your money back. That's 866-334-4516 or Cardscan.com slash Radio 2. Prices include 5% down payment at 7.5% APR over 30 years. Wow, look at this place. Four bedrooms, two baths. Yeah, I know. Jeez, you're not even 30. We have the same salary, Maggie. How can you afford all this? My mortgage payment is less than $300 a month. What? That's less than I pay for rent. How did you... All I did was call BNI for a list of homes that are being sold for back taxes or foreclosure. Home foreclosures are on the rise. That means there are great deals out there, especially for first-time home buyers. Like this listing, a four-bedroom, two-bath going for under $20,000. That's just $199 a month. Listings go fast, so call BNI for a list of these homes today. Call 1-800-619-1043. I could actually afford to own my own home. Yeah, and it's easy. Just call BNI for the list. Properties that have been foreclosed or repossessed are a real bargain and sometimes sell for a little money down. For a list of homes in your area, call 1-800-619-1043. 1-800-619-1043. That's 1-800-619-1043. Powered 101. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. The Jay Thomas Show on Howard 101. Shirley and Madison are here with me. We're all in New York City, and uh, you can call us at 888-STERN-101. Uh, uh, Cheech and Chong will be here in a, a few minutes. They'll be in Westbury uh, tonight, and I'll give you the whole rundown. I think they're here for Minneapolis. They got back together. I've had them on uh, independently. Uh, I've known Cheech for a long, long time. Uh, just met Tommy when I was here. And then Tommy came on and said how much he hated Cheech. And then Cheech, um, I guess, kind of didn't deal with it or whatever. And then they got back together, and so they went from hatred uh, to love. It shows you what money will do. And uh, who That's else got... kind of like the Shatner to Kay thing, because he recently came out, Shatner, and he said, why wasn't I invited to George to Kay's That's wedding? Why true. does he hate... No, it was on the internet. He I saw it. Less. I watched it. I happen to know uh, William Shatner. You know what? Happened to be, I'll be at his house on Monday night, and he could care less. Well, uh, let's, okay. go to, let's go to uh, Pandit Raj Kumar Sharma. Uh, go to solutionastrology.com. He has been giving us advice. We were talking to him about how you uh, know a good man. And it doesn't. It, it, you said that you trust the person who walks sideways. Now, yes. we were all in the studio as soon as you said that. And I'm sure people at home and in their cars and trucks were thinking about uh, when a person walks sideways, it, it would look odd that you would trust the person. It would seem like there would be a, a kind of a crazy person walking sideways. Oh, there are two things very important, Jay, that one should not think about that a person, uh, when he's walking on the road, he's walking 10 step left and 10 step right. No. You know, there are there is a, a very small gesture that when you're walking on the road, you open your um, feet mm-hmm. right and left. You, you open, oh, so with people that have their feet open right and left, they're the most yeah. trustworthy they, people. That's, that's, that's my meaning. That, like that's Charlie that's Chaplin. Like bow-legged. So yeah. a guy with yeah. a huge no cock. Sideways. Yeah, that's right. What about sideways men that want to, what about men that like to suck women's toes? I'm sorry, I... What about men that like to suck women's toes? <laughs> oh, that's big here. Mm. Very big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's websites there's, and everything. There's websites for it, and men that like to like they like to put their penis in between the women's toes and stuff. Here, that's a new thing. Has that gotten to India yet? It's just not started, but I think mm-hmm. we. I have to start it now. <laughs> I have to talking to you, yeah, Mr. Short. I'm sure it's going on. <laughs> that and I want to uh, film. I, wanna... I appreciate. I appreciate. You're going to make me spoil. <laughs> I want to. I want to make him spoil. I would love to go out to India and film a, a movie with uh, Pandit, uh, a remake, Smokey and the Pandit. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> 
All right. I'm not now, married to the no. idea. Oh, you know? Now, now, I Mr. Like now, Mr. Sharma, I went to Indian one, India one time. I was in uh, Delhi many, many years ago. It was uh, <laughs> unusual to me. There were the people in the street who had chopped their own hands off or something so that they could beg. Is that still going on in the new India, that kind of thing? And the, no, no, the cows walking easy. all over the place. Is that still happening in India? You know, you know, Jay, India is one of the most... So, upcoming economy in the world. Yes. There's the most upcoming industry for economy and yes. spirituality in the world. Right. You go to any corner of America, you will say, see the yoga centers and you will say... Yeah, but I'm talking so, about the cows and the people that chop their yeah, limbs off. I'm coming to that. Oh, cow, is a, cow is a relig religious uh, animal in India, mm -hmm. but they, they absolutely fine. They're still walking on the road, but definitely not in, not in that quantity, but you have seen no. There are centers where they send their cows to look after. There are people who looks after, looks after them. Now, when you're in your office, if a cow just walks in your office, you can't shoo the cow off? <laughs> I'm asking. No, can you, no, no. you can't say, shoo cow, get away, because it'll bring bad luck or bad karma? You're treated to with reverence. Basically, in, 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 in India, we worship cow, you know. We right. believe that cow has got more than uh, 33 million angels in him so we 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 worship cow. what does a cow have in it 33 million what the 33 million angels in cow you know we angels. Duck cow and we, 33 we million angels are inside so of a cow. Yes, are there any yes. mcdonald's in india because they serve cow they in india mcdonald they have stopped when they launched mcdonald in india they have stopped mcdonald because <laughs> the guy came we, up with we, that idea with indian we didn't we indian didn't allow them to of course not serve cow what idiots the reason, yeah and then <laughs> then the mcdonald uh, all all their uh, uh, you know they were stopped and uh, after that there was a department you know who fmb department food yeah. and beverages department yes. they mm -hmm. put yeah. a quality control on that and they have seen to it that they don't serve cow in their food wow. and in india there are only muslim communities that too only 10% muslims they eat beef right. but even in even i would say in india they don't they don't serve beef wow. can you I get any are, beef in india at all or no Beef is available in the market only in some areas where mm -hmm. Muslim communities are living. And in India, even mm -hmm. Muslims, they, they don't eat. I know more than 70% Muslims, they don't, they don't touch beef. They don't even let Kobe Bryant You eat play chicken. In chicken? In chicken you know is big in India? Chicken. Chicken's big. Yeah, yeah. And vegetarians. Chicken, mutton, I know there's a lot well, of chicken, vegetarians. I know the worst. Chicken, mutton, fish. I could, I could, chicken, mutton, and fish. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Sharma. Go to solutionastrology.com. Uh, Somebody walks sideways. You can trust them. We learned them. a lot. We learned to we learned invest about, in Citibank that's and right. walk sideways. And uh, one, Bank one of... One thing I would like to say. Yes, final... One more minute. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Final word from my side. Yes. I have date of birth of Mr. Barack Hussein Obama and John McCain. Should yeah. I say something about yeah. that? Yes, go ahead. Absolutely. They will have, they will have neck to neck fight and on 4th November 2008, it is Tuesday. Election is going to be go on and Barack Hussein Obama is got such a flying and shining star in his horoscope. Mm. Venus, Mercury, Jupiter and Saturn has placed so well in his horoscope that he will be next president of United mm -hmm. States of America. And it'll be a tight race. You're saying it'll be a very tight race, right, sir? It will be a very neck-to-neck -neck fight. Because wow. is that, would you say before we leave that McCain's uh, son is in Uranus? McKinney, you know, McCain, uh, when he was born, his ascendant was son. That's why ah, he yes. has been so powerful. All right. He was so powerful and... Uh, Pandit, Pandit, I would love to talk to you more, but we have to go. Go to solutionastrology.com. Pandit Raj Kumar Sharma, thanks for telling us Thank about the economy. Pandit. He's amazing. Thank okay. you. And I love all of you. And I all love of you, too. Love Never, you and too. And by the way, eat, less, amazing. eat less cow. Thank you so much, Pandit. Thank you. I can't believe he knew Unbelievable. November 4th was a Tuesday. Uh, uh, Cheech and Chong, uh, back together. Uh, who's on the phone? Cheech or Chong? Who's on the phone? Who do we, we have? Both. We have both of them? Oh, uh, wow. Now, this is a huge, huge honor for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Well, Cheech, it's Jay. How are you, Cheech? Jay, what's up? All right. Shuley is excited to have you here. Madison is here also. Hi. Now, look, years ago when you guys were performing, did you ever get up at 830 in the morning to do radio <laughs> shows? <laughs> When you were like the real Cheech and not the new 21st century Cheech? Uh, only if we were still up. You're right. right. You stayed up all night. So that's it. Now, when you and I talked, you were just starting the tour. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. And the wife is uh, Chong's wife is is opening. How's that? How is that going? Is it is it hard to follow her? Uh, well, we wear shorter skirts, you know. <laughs> so you come out. So, so now tonight you're in Westbury. I want to give everybody out there uh, listening because uh, this is, you know, this is a, this is a big plug. Now we got the millions and millions are listening here to uh, Howard 101. Tonight's in Westbury. They added a second show. Yeah. And then you head out from Minneapolis, the Orpheum Theater. And then you go to Houston, Texas, and then another show's been added there. So, and then go, I guess, to your website because it it's unbelievable. It's it's a huge success. The, the tour. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's been like the the adoration tour. I feel like we're on Palm Sunday or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I have so many friends that have called me up. Uh, you know, when they were on Howard this past week, they're like, "Dude, you got to get tickets, man. You got to get a picture with them. It's Cheech and Chong, the fucking <laughs> legends, man. It, it's just, it's like a wildfire. It's just spread, and it's going crazy, man. People are, are going now, nuts for now, this. Now, do some of your old groupies show up, some of these uh, overweight 55, Ooh. 60 year old women? <laughs> Cheech. If they can get their walkers, they do. They oh. do, right. Has anybody come up to you and said, you screwed me in 1981, and I'm... <laughs> Back There's to... been a couple that tried to call in. You know? <laughs> there was. There was one that I called in. Said she used to party with both of you guys. <laughs> yeah, this guy called into Howard was like, my grandmother said she oh, party shit. with you guys. And, and oh, it was just the ridiculous. <laughs> you know, when you and I, you know, like when you and I were first starting out, Cheech, yeah. and we would hear some old fart on the radio, you know, it was over. You know, you didn't, you know, no one's going to go going to go see them. But uh, now, you, uh, it, it, we're, we're, you're ageless now. It's like the, the, it's like the Rolling Stones, right? You know, the thing that surprises me most is that like 80% of our audience is between 30 and 40. And that means that they weren't alive the last time we were on stage. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It, it's, uh, it just shows the power that uh, weed is so mainstream now. <laughs> like, it really is. Like The word the word has spread amongst the Absolutely. Right. Now, Absolutely. Uh, is, is Tommy still sleeping this morning? No, I'm here. Hey, hey Tommy. Hey, Tommy is here. I've been Tommy. listening for about an hour now. <laughs> now, listen, Tommy. Hold on one second. Uh, you, you came on a couple of times in my show, and you were pretty adamant that you did not like like Cheech at all, and you would never get back together. This was like in the last couple of years. What what happened? How much money was it that made you like Cheech again? Uh, it was quite a bit, over a million. There you go. <laughs> Cheech, how does that make you feel, that it took over a million dollars to get Tommy Chong to like you again, Cheech? I feel rich. Okay. Yeah, what if good. it was 30 bucks? He'd feel right. like shit. Now, the wife is I opening. Good too, so, yeah. so it worked out good. Now, yeah. the, now uh, Tommy, the wife is opening. And, yes. And uh, I've never met anybody's wife who was funny. Is your wife funny? Is she doing She's very funny. She's very funny? Okay. She's very funny. Well, she, uh, you know, she's been... <laughs> She borrows my act, so <laughs> she does your so, act. So it works out really well. Okay, all right. So she's really funny. She's uh, really beautiful too. So that really uh, is she a lot younger, a lot younger than you, Tom? Yeah, she's a lot younger than you. Oh yes, oh yeah. She was. Uh, she was one of those that w w wasn't born when Teach and I were on stage last. Now, Cheech, you're single still right now? Uh, not really. I'm, I'm engaged. <laughs> oh, you're engaged. But, but you yeah. were here. You were now. The last time you and I talked, which was just recently, you were lamenting the fact that you had just gotten divorced, and it's yeah. so sad. And so now you're already engaged again. Yeah. You what know, a I'm, I'm a serial. Monopoly. What a fucking idiot you are, Cheech. Uh, I mean. <laughs> My God! If so, you saw this girl, you wouldn't say so. So it's all about looks. It's all now. about looks, isn't it? Yeah. It no, is. it's all about how much she loves me. I got mm. you. Now, so, so Tommy, the wife opens, uh, and and you guys are Westbury tonight, and uh, plays the guitar and all that. Have any of your old um, uh, uh, groupies uh, contacted you since this tour started, Tommy? Uh, one, one tried to. <laughs> well, she tried to, and. Uh, <laughs> They wouldn't let her out of the home. <laughs> they wouldn't, let her, they wouldn't let her leave the ground. I was actually invited um, by a guy I met on an internet dating site. He's like a president of one of your fan clubs. And like he gave me three different date choices. He's like, okay, we can go see um, Tommy Chong read from his new book, or we can go to uh, his book release party. <laughs> I mean, he had he just wanted to take me to s everything revolved yeah, everything around. Everything was that. all yeah. about right. you guys. Well, yeah, I 
I, I, know, I never went out with him. He was really night. creepy. Okay. He needed an alibi. <laughs> now, Tommy. <laughs> we're, we're an excuse to get laid. No? Yeah. Now, yeah, Tommy, you, you said you were listening for an hour. You mean you got up like at 6.30 or 7 this morning. Now, that's that's unlike uh, a stoner. You're not even a stoner anymore. You get up early like some old person. You know? Well, I am a old person, man. Are you kidding? He had to change his diaper, Chief? <laughs> Also, well, you know what I had to do? I had to get up and turn this alarm that kept going off. You know, the radio alarm, you know, the yeah. one that the, the, the people set when they leave and they get, wake you up at 6 in the yeah, morning. Yeah, we know what the alarm is. We understand. It's a, <laughs> she, <laughs> hey, she, she was explaining it like yeah, we'd never no, seen an alarm clock. Going, Hi, <laughs> welcome to, you know, morning radio. We're, we're going to annoy the hell out of you. <laughs> so what's some of the new stuff you're doing, Cheech? Are you, uh, yeah, like, uh, you, are you working over Sarah Palin? You're doing that? You make, does, does Tommy come out in the well, outfit? No, one, of the, one of the greatest things about us is that we don't do any of the uh, current stuff, and people don't want to hear it, you know. Yeah, just... I agree. I agree. Hey, who, wait a minute. Who needs new shit? Wait man. one second. You do 20, 25-year-old stuff? Yeah, easy, easy. I'm okay. 40 year old. 20 year old stuff. See, their stuff, though, can hold up 20, 25 years. It's, it's about them performing it, is what, is what makes like, it really funny. It's like yeah. doing standards. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, that, these days, that's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear anything. A Chi Chi Chong medley. Kane or Bush or any of those guys. You know, they just want to hear. You know what's really but, weird is that, that, you know, you would assume our audience is very liberal, that they would vote Obama. <laughs> not, not at not all. Not necessarily at all. Really? Well, they well, say as you get older. You get older. That's right. But as you get older, you get more conservative, mm -hmm. supposedly, right? But they're, but they're younger. But it, it doesn't matter. It, it, we it, we're like you know butter. Everybody likes us. Well, <laughs> I had heard uh, when you guys were on Howard that you had made a request that uh, nobody smoke anything at the shows, right? No. 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 We never. It's a vicious rumor. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Good. No, it's not. It's not up to us to please the audience. Oh, Thank good, God. good. I, I was worried. It was like somebody telling me Santa Claus isn't real. Do you sing any <laughs> of the songs? Do you do you sing? Um, yes. You sing. We, actually, we do a lot of music, and we and we do a lot Basketball of stuff we've never performed on stage before. You Mexican American. American. Mexican American. Born Mexican in East American. LA. We do yeah. a salsa version of Born in East LA with Tommy and Shelby dancing salsa. It's like Bollywood. It's great. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's great. You know, Tommy. Tommy, you got your your wife uh, salsa lessons, right? No. She she had me take lessons. No, it was the other way around. She she started uh, dancing salsa about a year before I got into it because I, I thought it was kind of sissy until I went to a salsa <laughs> dance and I, I couldn't do it. Right. And so then I had to start taking lessons on my own. And, I, and it took me years. It's a tough dance. Now, now um, Cheech uh, and, and Tommy Chong, you both have the – Chong is the young wife now. But Cheech, are you using Viagra now or is it, is it still strong and hard like it was years ago? No, I use it. You use a crowbar now, but have you fallen to Viagra yet? And there's nothing. I mean, we've been talking about getting old and all that, and you got you got to satisfy this young new uh, woman, a Russian woman. Somebody told me, Russian, Russian woman. She, she borrows my penis. He borrows your penis. <laughs> borrows Tommy's penis. All I right. use my stunt dick. <laughs> he can do it. Uh, no, actually, uh, I haven't tried to buy a girl. Have you, Cheech? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, I Tommy, too, too Tommy, much vitamins. Now, Tommy, <laughs> what's it like now? Are you truly friends again? I mean, it's a huge success. Uh, money is rolling in. You uh, people are talking movies, books. Oh, whatever. You're back. Yeah, you know, are you friends we're, again? We're, uh, yeah. Friends as long as he doesn't see Don Johnson anymore. Or <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, if I hear those names again, then I'll, I'll sulk for a while. But uh, okay. No, no, we are. We're 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 closer than friends. We're actually gay lovers, really. <laughs> well, no. The reality is, and and this, it seems like Cheech, your career, uh, uh, you know, kind of took off, and things were going better for you than they were for Tommy. And so, and would you say that was true, Tommy? That that it just looked like Cheech was in a better spot than you, or were you just absolutely, absolutely? Yeah. It pissed I mean, you off. Not only doing. Uh, you know, major movies and major television shows. He was also, you know, touring the art circuit with with an art uh, and, exhibit. You know, that made yeah. everybody jealous. And so, short, um, and short and ugly had to uh, really piss you. Yeah, off. I mean, you know, <clears throat> and everywhere we went, you know, everybody would say, "But well, hey, where's your partner? Hey, your partner's doing really good, isn't he?" Yeah, <laughs> that's what you and, need to hear. Uh, no, but that didn't affect me at all. You know, I mean, I, I loved him in spite of his uh, enormous success. <laughs> <laughs> you know the thing is, we have this connection that just can't be broken. It's like, like.
take a tattoo and you go get it lasered off. Yeah. Right. And you have a scar that looks like the tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Cheech and Chong, uh, tonight in Westbury, uh, they've added a, a second, a theater, second right. show. And, uh, um, yeah. and then, um, I, you know, then they, they go off to Minneapolis. I mean, this is like a bus and truck tour you're doing. Then you go on to Houston, Texas. Another show was added there. Then to Dallas. Let me ask you guys. Back to Connecticut. It, uh, un- in Dallas, too. Yeah, what's yeah. that? What? There's two shows in Dallas as well. Wow. wow. Can I ask you guys, uh, you know, this thing is obviously going to be a huge success. Would you uh, think about writing a new album and, and putting on a new show and, and getting back out there and doing there's, it one more time? Al- People don't buy albums anymore. Yeah, you know, I was true. thinking about this the other day. They asked this question about albums. albums. You know, the new albums are the, like, Comedy Central specials or HBO specials. Do one of those. Eden has. Yeah. That's their albums. And we're doing roast. We're, we're going to be doing a roast. We're going to be doing uh Yeah, TBS. Uh, we're going to be doing a roast on TBS during the Las Vegas Comedy Festival. Nice. Also, uh, we're, we're, we're recording uh, our um, our concert for uh, the Weinstein Company. A DVD. A DVD. And we're um, uh, actually we're getting prepared to accept our Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, have any of your probation officers come to any of the concerts? Because you, you know, you. Uh, we had you right when you got out of jail and all that. Any of the probation officers come to visit you? Any of the? No, no. The, uh, I only had one probation officer, a very nice lady. Mm-hmm. But no, she hasn't come by. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, just some ex uh, ex cons, you know, that I right. that I was in, in in with. They come by. There's a caddy for Anthony Qu- Anthony Kim. Uh, you know, uh, Eric Larson. He he was in uh, in Taft with me and. Uh, He's a caddy runner, now uh, for the pro golfer from New York. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he, I, I'm in contact with him. Okay, but n- but none of the guards. <laughs> none of the guards came. The drug uh, counselor called me. <laughs> that was it. Okay, he all right. Me. <laughs> uh, uh, Cheech and Chong uh, back together, and uh, this this is going to go on like like the whole year, right? I mean, into we're, into we're two into March already. My God, and wow. and you're just adding places, and so you don't have a stop date or. Or you do, or uh, probably around the end of March. I got to go in and get my knee operated on. So you're stopping for surgery? Yeah, <laughs> it's like the old days. We used to tour until one of us needed an operation. <laughs> Can we take a couple? Stop. I, do, I do my operations and keep going. You know. <laughs> can, can we? Can we take a couple of phone calls? You have a few more minutes. Sure, man. All right. Cheech and Chong are here. What? What, what do I send them to? Is there a Cheech and Chong website where they can? I think find a MySpace. Them? You guys have a MySpace page or something? Yep. yep. We have a Cheech and Chong MySpace. We have a Cheech and Chong Tour dot com right now. Oh, wow. All right. Dot com. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, the money really brings people close together, doesn't it? Uh, Amazing. It's unbelievable. America. It's unbelievable. Uh, Kenny of Pennsylvania, when's the last time uh, you saw uh, Cheech and Chong, Kenny? The last time I... Uh, good morning, everybody. Yes. Good morning. Uh, the, the last time I saw Cheech and Chong was 1969. Jesus. Wow. Carnegie Hall. Wow. Carnegie Hall. Well, that would be pretty amazing because we never did Carnegie Hall until <laughs> 70. Two. Yeah, Seven, Kenny. Seventy-two. Yeah. Well, you know what they say: if you if you can remember the sixties, you didn't live through them. <laughs> That's right. So he was pretending. Right, yeah. Did you obviously see some good shit, you Kenny? Know, Kenny, yeah, yeah, Kenny, yeah, Kenny, you're having some sort of a flashback or something. That uh, did you really see him, Kenny, or you just think you saw them? No, no, I we think we I saw them. All right, he thinks you saw. All right, and you played <laughs> Carnegie. All right, thank you. Wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great in those days, you know, Willick. We played. Places that the, no rock and roll act had ever played, uh, Carnegie Hall, Sydney Opera House, Kennedy Center. It was, it was, it was, we were really breaking ground in those days. Well, I was a, a disc jockey in um, um, North, Carolina. North Carolina, and Cheech and Chong come to Charlotte, and they did the morning show with me. And then that night, we went out with my my gorgeous wife at the time. And um, she had a little tiny waist, big, huge tits, and a fabulous ass, big red head. And when she gets in, she gets in ass first, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to impress Cheech and Chong so much that I dusted my face off. I said, let me dust a place off for her to sit, <laughs> to sit down. And I think, Cheech, you said, do you mind if I use that? And I said, absolutely. Did you ever use that line? 
I used it last night. Last night. Oh, my God. Nice. I, I have to tell you, I, I come full I, circle, Jay I Thomas. have bragged about that for 35 friggin' years. Yeah, that you, t- I know a good, you know it's a good joke if somebody wants to steal it. You I, know? No, but you asked me. You said, do you mind if I... And I said, I think, well, I'm never going to get a chance to use it. I'm in wow. friggin' North and Carolina. And had the rules been reversed, believe me, Jay would not have asked for permission. He would have just <laughs> no, used it. In what it. context do you use the joke, Cheech? How do you... How do you do but, but it? When I do the the, the low rider riding in the in the car, yeah. and I'm yelling at girls, and I go, "Hey, baby, come on, I'll give you a ride here. Come on, come for a place for you to sit down." <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you dust your face off. People and, go nuts. It gets a big laugh. Damn, that's I'm so proud of that. Wow, it's unbelievable. Jay. All right, Tommy, I'll try and think of a joke for you uh, before the end of the century. Please. All right. Okay. Cheech and Chong uh, go to the MySpace, find it, and until uh, Cheech gets operated on, uh, they will uh, uh, be touring. Guys, thank you very much. Great Cheech. that you're back together. Go and ahead, Cheech and Chong Tour dot com, I believe, is the website. Cheech and Chong Tour dot com. It's an Barry. honor talking to you guys, man. Big, right. big fan for many years. Thanks, you, man. Me all too. Right. Me too, man. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Cheech and Chong. Uh, the Jay Thomas Show at Howard One Hundred One. Howard One Hundred One. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-101. The Jay Thomas Show. On Howard 101. Around the world. And up your block. It's time for America to wake up. No more bullshit. This is it. It's a revolution. This is a Howard 100 News Brief. I'm Ralph Howard. In this corner, Reverend Bob Levy. In the other, the guy with the most famous penis in America. It's Howard 100 News Spotlight. Howard 100 News Spotlight. This is what I call, if I can't win this one, I'm retiring. The Reverend Bob Levy is getting back into the ring. November 15th, Broomall, Pennsylvania. Bob Levy, with a record of 0-1, tries to get his first win at the hands of one John Wayne Bobbitt. Right, Bob? Yeah, that's what he told me. I mean, it could change unless they pull a... Uh... A bigger star, but how? I don't see that happening. Right. Okay. So, uh, so what do you know about your opponent? I, I what do I know? I, we have a lot in common. Uh, we both ha- don't have much of a cock. Is this Bobbitt's first fight? Maybe, maybe he might have fought one other one or whatever. But that's not my concern. My concern is that it's not Danny, <laughs> and that makes me happy. What will you do differently this time around? Well, I've been beating my wife up daily. I've been trying to have her come at me, and I knock her back, and it's been working fine. So, uh, now, nah, but really, what we, what I talked to Leon about is, like, I said, I want to be like Danny was to me. I want to be a fucking gr- aggressive animal that's just on top of him the whole fucking time. Proud one under news, Shuli said, Shalom, bitch. Think there's no story? Bullshit. 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 This is Howard 100 News. For serious traffic and weather on demand, go to channels 148 to 158. And for XM traffic and weather on demand, go to channels 210 to 230. And when you spot news related to the Stern Show, email Howard 100 News at Sirius Radio.com or call 877 33 Sirius and go to 100 for the Howard 100 News tip line. Another Howard 100 News brief at the top of the hour or as close as we can get. When it's time to go to the track, Sirius NASCAR Radio has got you covered. With a full host of races and pre- and post-race coverage, Sirius is the place for all things racing. We're back at the track today at 6.45 p.m. Eastern with the Spring Cup Series qualifier for the Pep Boys Auto 500 live from Atlanta Motor Speedway exclusively on Sirius NASCAR Radio Channel 128. Sirius NASCAR Radio 128, now part of the best of Sirius on XM 104. The bills are piled up. Why not pay off those debts with cash from your unwanted gold and jewelry? Cash for Gold. That's cash, the number four gold, will turn your unwanted gold, silver, and platinum jewelry into cash. Cash for Gold is a direct refiner of precious metals. There's no middleman. Therefore, you collect more money. Cash for Gold makes the process simple. Request a refiner's return pack, place your items in the pack, and send back to Cash for Gold. Cash for Gold will send cash within 24 hours of their receipt. Cash for Gold is the only company to offer fast. Cash, a service that wires your money directly into your account within a day. The refiner's return 
term pack is absolutely free and also insured. Remember, cash in your pocket is much better than unwanted jewelry in your drawer. Call 1-877-GOLD-590 or go to cashforgold.com. That's cash, the number four, gold.com. Mention promo code 100 and receive an extra 5% above the already high payout. That's 1-877-GOLD-590 or cashforgold.com. Cash, the number four, gold.com. Over time, your computer slows down. Slower web browsing, slower performance, errors and instability. It just gets slower and slower and slower. Want to get your PC back up to speed? Now you can with ARO, Advanced Registry Optimizer. ARO is a registry cleaner that can help your slow, cluttered, and error-ridden computer run better than ever and extend the life of your PC. ARO optimizes your PC by scanning and fixing errors, which can result in faster startup and load times and increased computer performance. With ARO, your PC can be fast, clean, and error-free. That's why industry leader CNET says ARO will clean your computer's clock and keep it ticking. Get a free PC scan right now when you visit GetARO.com and use promo code SERIOUS. Then click Scan Your PC Now to make your PC run faster, cleaner, and error-free. That's GetARO.com, G-E-T-A-R-O.com, promo code SERIOUS, and scan your PC now. Try it free today. It's a fact. 40,000 businesses close their doors every month. Attention business owners, if you're getting collection calls, letters, judgments, levies, foreclosures, and don't take action, you could lose your business. However, if you want to pay your creditors, there is a solution without bankruptcy. If you need a loan, if you have tax problems, if you've used credit cards to support your business, you can get help before it's too late. Call Corporate Turnaround now. We'll give you a free consultation, and if you qualify, we'll help get your company out of debt. We offer a plan and a real solution, not just fluff or tapes. Corporate Turnaround has helped thousands of businesses get back on the road to success throughout the nation. 40,000 businesses close their doors every month. Don't let it be yours. We could change the fate of your business and your life. Call Corporate Turnaround now for free information and a free consultation. For more information, go to www.helpmybusiness.net. That's www.helpmybusiness.net. You're listening to The Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. We're back with more of The Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas Show. On Howard 101. Find out all about... Um... <laughs> I was thinking, you know, go to jthomas.com, you know, you, what is Howard, the king of all media? All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm the, 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 entertain, the loser of entertainment. Find out all about the loser of entertainment. No, you're the jester. The court jester. <laughs> the court jester of entertainment. The prince of all boat and RV shows <laughs> is in the house. That's right. Uh, uh, so go to jthomas.com and uh, you can buy stuff in our store. And, and, you know, some people make millions of dollars. We only make enough to pay for the Christmas party. That's all we're looking at. And we just go like to Fridays or something or to Applebee's. And it's all for the kids, Jim. It is all for the kids. Yeah. So just go there, and um, we even have my daddy as a trucker. For those of you who don't want, it's a mess down there, Mangina. And you can actually buy J. Thomas Show hats and all of that. No one seems to care about those. There are other uh, other things. And then you had a great idea, Shuli. Uh, we haven't added a new product, but after the election, we will. We have uh, Sarah Pill and V. Pilf. We have Obama the commie. Uh, we depend, you know, who cares you know, who you're going to vote for? We're just in it for the money. And you have uh, John Drilled McCain. in Alaska. Drilled in Alaska. Get off my daughters. We have that one, too. We have a big trucker market, and uh, the last mm. couple days uh, we've been talking to truckers about the, uh, the piss bottles, piss bombs. pissing bottles, and throw them out the window. Yes. Some are offended by it. Yes. Some feel that it's their right as truckers mm-hmm. to do it. Right. I feel that we make a bumper sticker that says, how's my piss throwing, and then the J. Thomas number. The the uh, the 888 number during the... Yeah. That's a good idea. Can we do that, Sean? Yes. How's my piss throwing? Please call one nah. 888 Four one zero two. I love it. How's my piss throwing? I love it. That's right. Took me a minute. All right. But I love it. Do That'll that. be coming like soon. Hot right. cakes. They right. will sell. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, it's it, so trashy though. Greg <laughs> you know? Orlando, uh, the Jay Thomas Show. Yes, Greg. How are you? Hey, good, 
Hey, good morning, everybody. For those of you that weren't listening all morning long, earlier, uh, before we had uh, the guy, uh, we had Mr. Sharma on and Cheech and Chong, uh, Madison was talking about uh, her life and a man she uh, uh, is attracted to uh, who has a foot fetish. And so I'm not I, sure I'm attracted to him. I, I see here that Greg wants to continue talking about the foot fetish at 888-STERN-101. Yes, go ahead, Greg. <laughs> Yeah, not so much about the foot fetish, but about your booty call tomorrow night, Madison. Hey, so, well, like, what are the parameters? Are you going to give him anal? You know, you're going to blow him? You I know, have yet to meet a Jew broad who's into anal. Hey, you know, Greg, we're not going to answer those questions and let you perhaps... Why not? Correct the... Oh. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's safe. There you go. I'll was... probably go over there to his dumpy little apartment. Is it a crummy place? He's got Does them. he live in a wind tunnel like no, this an guy? Actor. Oh, he's an actor, I'll so he has no there, money. He has I'll no be money. Dressed all hot. I'll go in there. I'll be like, let's get this going. You do, no, I'm you like won't. a guy. Yes, I now, am. What's yes, hot? I when am. you say you're dressed hot, what what's dressed uh, you go over before you even have dinner? Okay, like or, tight jeans with the boots. Before you, know, you get any boots, food or like anything. A, let's, no, it'll be late after I've been oh, partying. Oh, she's okay. going out partying with other people. Yeah. where she doesn't he's feel that work, pressure. He's got to work. He's waiting tables. He'll be done at like one in the morning. So this is like I'm like a guy. Into the night waiter. Oh man, he's hot. He's a waiter actor, and then I'll go over there. I'll wear something low cut and the high boots and mm-hmm. the perfume and the makeup, and mm-hmm. I'll just I'll to take it off. Throw him down, and I'll like, come on, let's do it, and then uh, <laughs> do it, and then I'll leave. Now, how soon do you leave after it's over? Fifteen twenty minutes. Man, do you that's cry? Too long. It's too long because it's an empty life. No, I'll live? probably cry on Sunday. Yeah, you'll cry Sunday. I will. Because it's will. an empty life. It, I, I just, I have, you know, I need, maybe if I just got a better vibrator, then this would all be, I don't really need to, I'm actually okay, I'm better when I'm not, I'm better in my head mentally when I'm not pining over guys or dating anyone. At this stage, mm-hmm. I need to be by myself. It's called but sports screwing, what you're doing. I, sports I screwing. I kind of just want to bang this guy, just for shits and giggles. Okay, all right. And then, but 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 then on Sunday, it's depressing for you. Um, You know what? No, because he's a good. We laugh. We have a good. We, he's a really nice guy. I mean, it'd be mm-hmm. it'd be interesting if this isn't the foot fetish. Asked guy. me out on a real date. Well, if there was a chick I knew that would come over, fuck me and leave, I'd laugh at everything she said too. <laughs> no, he's he's actually. Ira, Ira laughed at that one. Ira, the weatherman. Ira, the weatherman. Ira, Ira, the weatherman is here on the Jay Thomas show at Howard One Hundred One. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Ira. Ira, have you ever had a booty call like that where a woman just calls you up and says, "I'm coming over, Ira." Let's get it on. That's right. I I did have one. You did have one. <laughs> yes. And and what was her name? What was her name? Her name was Louise. Louise came over. So you were minding your business. So you live in the Co-op City, don't co-op you? Co-op City. It's in the same apartment that your mother and father lived in when you were a little boy. Uh, no. No, it isn't. I switched. Oh, you switched to a one-bedroom apartment. But you were raised bachelor there with your pad. parents there. Yeah, uh, we're, 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 <laughs> bachelor yeah, pad. Time ago, and now you've got this bachelor pad. Yes. All right. So the Louise came over, and was she dressed hot and said, "Let's get it on." Uh, yes. Oh my Ooh. God. What was the first thing you did? How much her? did you pay her? Nothing whatsoever. <laughs> right. How? What was the first thing you did to her? We were loving one another. You were loving Aww. one another. Yeah. Wow. That was a fisting. Did, did you use that voice? Did you? Did you use that voice? By the way, you can't get through a morning without saying fisting. <laughs> I do it just so you bring <laughs> no, it up. No, you don't. I swear. No, you could. I had no urge. I, I just never, said that was you, for you. He's never fisted anybody. That's horrible. Elbow deep. Why don't you ask? I we even had a caller that fisted his daughter in the back. Earlier today. So now, all right, Louise comes over, and is she dressed hot for you, just like Madison was? Uh, yes. I see. What was she wearing? Do you remember? I forget. You forget. Now, and and um, you made love. Did she say it was great love that you made? Yes. Was, was she loud? She did. Was she loud? Was she a screamer? Did she scream? No, no, no. She was very, very calm. Were you loud? Very calm. Were, did you scream? No. No, no. no, not at all. So you're a soft lover. Yes. Oh. Very so, are you a good kisser? Oh, I'm a lovely kisser. Really? You Jay, are? why don't you try, test it out? Why don't no. you test it out? You know what, Dawara? You would kiss me if I wanted to, wouldn't you? I uh, I have an, even another lady friend. Oh, really? Oh, he's, wow. he's not going to talk about the kisser. Two booty calls. Laverne, right, hold on. Laverne, Laverne, would you, and Lois. Laverne Lois. No, Laverne and Louise. Oh, Louise. Louise. So, so, also a lady. Sure, and Laverne <laughs> is yes. the hottest one. Laverne, when's the last time Laverne had been had been to your home? Oh, I've never been with her. What about with Shirley? At my home, but you go to her place. I went to her place. 
And 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 when you walk in, what happens? Was she's ready to go at that time? She oh, she here. is hot like hotcake. She's hot like a hotcake. Wow. Does she go up? Is she like Lonnie just... Anderson hot? Because I know my dad's really into Lonnie Anderson. She is very very. She's a hot person. How old were you when you first had sure your first not... sexual experience? How old she has were you? a fever. Um, How old were you? Can you remember? Hmm? Forty five. Forty five years old. I see. With, with first, what? First sexual experience. Forty five years out old. Of oh here. yeah. You waited all that time before yes. you had sex. Well, you want to make sure you do it right. You must have blown a hole in her back. <laughs> Maybe I did. Yeah, with all of that. Did you have to put a life preserver on? 45 years Ira, old. Ira, why did you wait so long to have sexual intercourse? I don't know, just like Had that. to wait for his parents to die, Madison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Aww. You had to wait for your parents to die, didn't you? They had to be dead first. Yeah. You, cause why? Because you, you couldn't have sex in your apartment with no, your mom and dad. No, never. Of course not. Did you ever hear your parents having sex? Sure, they had sex. I know they never hear it. 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 No, never. Oh, you never heard it. You ever walk in on your folks naked, ever? Never. Never. Okay, there you go. I did once. 45 years old. Not my folks. But you know what's great? (laughs) If, if, if you're, if you've had it all from the time you're like 17 or 18 or whatever, just think how exciting the back half of his life is now. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Unbelievable. Uh, it's, uh, Mike from Toronto. It's the Jay Thomas show with Shuley and Madison. Yes. Hello, Mike. How are you? Good. How you guys doing? Good, thank you. Yeah, just curious, whatever happened to uh, Madison going on a date with Twitchells? Ah, oh, that's yeah. a good question. Who is Twitchells? Twitchells is a kid who has Tourette's, who comes on uh, Miserable Men from time to time. <laughs> And uh, we set him up with Madison. Madison thinks he's really cute, good-looking kid. Does he have cursing Tourette's? No, he has tics Tourette's where, tics he, Tourette's. where he goes like, and he's like, oh, man. He never called me. He, he's he a has... blast. you got to go out with him. But wait a minute. Does he take a pill to stop that? They have a pill for So that. here's the interesting thing. When he used to be on medication, gain weight. He, gained, he was over 400 pounds, and he lost all this weight. And uh, and then he uh, oh get out of here, big Rob Marshall. Wow. Yeah. And he lost he lost all this weight, and uh, then he started smoking pot, and he found that pot was a uh, a, a Could better help substitute medically for it. It, it, it uh, yeah, but that twitching is really bad. But it got rid of his tics, and he's also an actor. Like he can he can stop the tics for a little while, for like thirty seconds, a minute. But then as soon as mentally he knows he's done holding back the tics, they come back like tenfold. But as an actor, you, you unless he's going to do a one minute commercial. <laughs> Uh, you're on stage or in a movie or something longer than a minute. Well, he so. could do a one-man show called My Life with Tourette's or something. Well, he was on MTV. Might be very touching. He was on MTV's uh, True You know, Life I saw I a Tourette's. comic with MS and all that. I've seen the, the comics in the uh, wheelchair yeah. and all that. It Cerebral all, palsy. It creeps me out. It's always creeps me out. It just makes me jealous. Well, we all... Jealous. I'm like, oh, I'm like, if I was in a wheelchair, you know how many bits I'd have right now? <laughs> oh, 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 I'd have 14 specials like Carlin. No, I saw the guy with MS uh, do the stand-up. and Oh, the guy from Last Comic Standing? Yeah. Oh, oh man, Shuley, I know. does he have my number? Hey, yeah, you, I, gave him, I gave him your number. Good I'll bang the crap good out of him. Good evening, Joe. Good like that. It's like, you know, you don't want, you, are you laughing at him or yeah. with him, you know? Oh. So I just joined the gym. Oh, 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 I know. Come on. Stop. All right. Didn't Let's go to Rob in North Carolina. Rob, the Jay Thomas Show. We had Mr. Charmer on earlier. Did you get anything out of those stock tips from the numerologist, the astrologer that we had on, Rob in North Carolina? Yeah. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning. Um, I did, but the only problem I have, and I hope it didn't freak out a bunch of listeners, the American dollar is on the world market as a leader. So their stock closing is mimicking the day before our stock closing. You know what? If you're going to call with logic, <laughs> this is the wrong show. Okay? No, I'm sorry. No, no, this okay. is the wrong show. When I say he's in the future and the stock market crashed, and that means it's going to crash here because he's in the future, don't call up with logic. That's, you know, I mean, you know that, that just ruins the show. You know how that show calls right, the code? God almighty. Let's, let's shift gears because I swear to God that guy's called me about 500 times. He's gotten my last name right. Who? But my first name <laughs> wrong. The Indian, the Indian guy, but he always <laughs> wants to refinance my house. No, it's not, not the same person. <laughs> not the same. Indian. That's a different Indian. That's a different Indian. <laughs> But they're like Canadians. They all sound alike. Yes, they have no yes, accents. Sir. You know, they're yes, always like Canadians. Yes, yes. Madison, where were you about 15 years ago when I couldn't find a woman that would leave 10 minutes after we got done? Aww. She was busy getting hit with a pack of hot
hot dog. Wow. Now, yeah, ma- now, well, you know, now I Madison, one foot, dog said a time, but foot yeah. fetish guy, your father threw frozen hot dogs at her. We've heard it all. And, and you're going to get some surgery soon. When do you go in for uh, the surgery? Two weeks from today. Two and weeks this from weekend, today. I'm going to dress up like Sarah Palin and get laid. All right. So she's doing Me all of that. So she's getting ready. And she's very nervous. And the chin is going to get fixed. I'm doing a chin implant and lipo under her. Are they going to get rid of that huge mole on your neck? getting rid of the mole. Thank God. It's like a raisinette in uh, Would you stop it? You know, it's got a hair coming out of it. No, it doesn't. It, it does. It, it, it's it, like you're on a motorcycle and a raisinette no. gets thrown out of a car and it sticks right no. in your neck. Oh Either that or a tick. It looks like a huge Julie, tick that's, you hit him that's for me? blood full. I, I Let's go to, to Joey the schizophrenic from Seattle who's been thrown out of the bus station. Joey is back with us. Joey, I'm you've shot. been listening to the show today. What what feeling do you have right now? What what do you want to say after listening for the last two and a half hours? I'm horny as hell, Jay. I, I want to come on Madison's tick. <laughs> you want to come on her tick? And her tick? new nose? Which you get that new nose. I, I got this new nose fetish that's just unreal. <laughs> As he shows me her feet and wears a paper bag over her head with just a hole cut out for the nose. Okay. So, you, so I'm look at her feet, her pretty feet. <laughs> he's a he's a new nose you got fetish a new guy. Nose Only fetish new nose. Guy. You got Only a new nose. Only new. This is off of old you. <laughs> He likes that new nose smell that he they likes, have. He likes the yeah. uh, he likes to come on rhinoplasty. <laughs> All right, thank you. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Stay where you are. A man coming up who built his own coffin at Howard One Hundred One. You're listening to the Jay Thomas Show. Call eight 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 Stern One Hundred One. We'll be back with more of the Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas Show on Howard One Hundred One. Around the world, then up your block. It's time for America to break up. No more bullshit. This is it. It's a revolution. This is a Howard 100 News Brief. I'm Ralph Howard. The battle rages on. It began when Jillian Barbary got up to sing at the Howard Stern wedding. Jillian got blasted in a lowdown with high pitch mic. Once again, Jillian is not sitting down. Howard 100 News. Follow up. I just feel like I was having fun with it. Why am I even defending myself to the poor man's high pitch Eric? I mean, this is ridiculous. High pitch Mike. Already. No, I know, but he's like the poor man's high pitch Eric. TV personality Jillian Barbary pissed that Howard 100 News producer High Pitch Mike went after her in his lowdown. He said she was being selfish for singing with Natalie Maines at Howard's wedding. So we got the two on the phone. Well, I can't believe you're turning on me like this. Listen, I feel bad that I have to uh, attack you in, in my uh, commentary segment. But you after don't we- have to call, attack me, for the love of God. I was just having fun. Have you ever gotten drunk and having fun? I don't, how could I ever take the spotlight away from Beth and Howard? It's their fucking day. It's Beth. Look at her. It was, take the spotlight away from her, for Christ's sake. It was after I heard the super fan roundtable show with you guys. Oh, me, Mike. They fucking ambushed me, and I sang. I could have said no, and then you would have called me a dick for not singing. You said, "Oh, she's good enough to sing on their wedding day, but she's not good. You know, she's too high, high on herself to sing on the on the wrap up show. That's ridiculous." Well, it wasn't until I heard Superfan and I heard how bad your singing was that I I formed that opinion. I listen to your voice. I mean, at least I don't have to sing every day. You have to go through life with that fucking voice. Oh my God! I- Since it is the Stern Show, they did eventually kiss. And make up. The main point is you had fun. Yeah, I'm glad I had fun. I did at, at everyone else's expense. <laughs> Thank you for giving us your time today, and I, and I hope I didn't upset you at all. Well, I got over it. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> all right. Look out, Stern fans! You never know who High Pitch Mike is going to take aim at next. For Howard 100 News, I'm Lisa G. Howard 100 News. News on, on, on. Sensor. For serious traffic and weather on demand, go to channels 148 to 158. And for XM traffic and weather on demand, channels 210 to 230. Another Howard 100 News Brief at the top of the hour, or as close as we can get. Howard 100. Howard 100. And Howard 101. This weekend, catch up on what you missed on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Check out Sirius.com for a complete Howard 100 and Howard 101 weekend schedule. Catch up on what you miss this week all weekend long. Howard 100 and Howard 101. The best of XM on Sirius. Get to the Crosby back at Crosby scores. Sidney Crosby. This is NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman, and if you want to stay on top of everything happening in the NHL, you can now sign up for the best of XM. Now available on your Sirius Radio. Alex Ovechkin skating in Ovechkin. Tries to score. With the best of XM, 
You'll hear NHL Home Ice, the world's first 24-7 radio hockey channel featuring expert analysis from greats like Hall of Famer Phil Esposito, interviews, and NHL play-by-play right through the Stanley Cup Final. Plus, you'll hear my weekly show, The NHL Hour. Add the best of XM to your serious subscription and you'll get NBA games, all PGA Tour events, college sports, and more. The Best of XM is available now. Call 888-7-BEST-XM. That's 888-723-7896. Or go to Sirius.com. Available to U.S. subscribers only. So please sign up for the Best of XM now and get on the ice for what promises to be another great NHL season. What are your meetings costing you? Let's do the math. You wake up early, spend an hour getting dressed up, grab a quick bite of some awful fast food, and drive two hours each way in traffic just for a one-hour meeting? Time is money, people. Add it all up, and you need GoToMeeting, the most affordable, easy-to-use web conferencing service available. With GoToMeeting, you can present, demonstrate products, train, or collaborate on documents right from your desk. All you need is a PC and an Internet connection. Launch your meeting on the fly or schedule it in advance. No more wasted time on the road. Travel less and still exceed your sales goals. Close deals faster because you don't have to travel to get to important meetings. Best of all, you can hold unlimited meetings for one low fee. Flat rate. Save time, save money with GoToMeeting. Serious subscribers can try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use promo code Serious. That's GoToMeeting.com, promo code Serious for this free GoToMeeting offer. GoToMeeting, online meetings made easy. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state government and wonder whether you'll ever be able to pay them? If you owe $15,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you qualify for a free confidential consultation with Clear Creek. Our tax attorneys stop the harassing phone calls, remove penalties, and eliminate your tax debt fast. All it takes is one call to Clear Creek at 877-TAX-PRO-NOW. 877-TAX-PRO-NOW. Get your life back. Call 877-TAX-PRO-NOW. Term Life Lion Script in 3, 2, 1. Term Life Insurance. Everybody should have the right protection, and there's only one place to get it. The Term Life Lion. I, I can't read this script anymore. There's a script. Listen, let me talk from my heart. We all know why we need term life insurance in case the unforeseen happens. Well, I have a family too, and if anything happens to me, I want to make sure my house and my debts are handled and my family has enough money to take care of them for a long time. So about a year ago, I called the term lifeline. I got a very affordable price for a half million dollar policy. I want to make sure my family's protected if something happens to me. If you already have term life insurance, call us and get more coverage. It never hurts. Or see if you're paying too much right now. If you don't have term life insurance, you definitely need to call us. Here's the number. 866-549-TERM. 866-549-TERM. That's 866-549-TERM. Wade Boggs, Steve DeBerg, Mercury Morris, all athletes that tackled their hair loss permanently with medical hair restoration. It's 2008, guys. You don't have to live with hair loss anymore. The technologies, the techniques, the costs, it's all changed. You can now regrow your hair and get awesome, undetectable results for less with MHR. It's no longer a question of if it'll work. It's now simply a question of when. When are you going to decide that you want to look like you did at least 10 years ago? One phone call, one complimentary evaluation, and bam, you can look 10, 15 years younger for less than you ever imagined, and your confidence will be back to where it was in your 20s. Write this number down, 800-647-8090. That's 800-MHR-8090. It's not a question of if anymore, it's a question of when. When will you regrow your hair? Call now and schedule your free private consultation, 800-MHR-8090, 800-647-8090. And now, another truck tip from Progressive Commercial Auto Insurance. Stay up on the latest cuss words. If fuel prices continue like this, you'll need them. Are rising fuel prices making you use some four-letter words? Time to call Progressive Commercial Auto Insurance or visit ProgressiveCommercial.com. More often than not, Progressive can save owner-operators like you money on important products like non-trucking liability and physical damage coverages. That way, your business gets all the coverage it needs without doing major damage to your wallet. Fuel prices are bad enough. Why pay more than you have to for insurance? Contact your local independent agent today or visit ProgressiveCommercial.com and learn how Progressive has been saving businesses like yours money for over 30 years. 
Getting great truck insurance at a great rate. Now that's progressive. United Financial Casualty Company and its affiliates, Mayfield Village, Ohio. Available in most states. The Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. The Jay Thomas Show. On Howard 101. How do you like a rock star? Uh, by the way, my son uh, JT and I will be on the Today Show with Kathy Lee Gifford after 10 o'clock this morning. Um, I was going to be on the regular one, but I forgot that I had this job. And I'll be telling that same old, yeah, I gave him can up I for adoption. Can I come with you and you sure. can pretend I'm the mother? No. Oh. No. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. You have to understand. You're going to? Even yeah. though we make fun of it, there are some people that giving a child up for adoption or whatever is a you know an intense... You've made fun of it. You're milking this <laughs> adoption thing like nobody's business. Jay, what's the worst thing that happened when you found out the boy was your son? I said, well, when you give a little bastard away, Dr. Phil... You don't expect him to come back. I think they cut that out of the show. I wanted to say before we go any further that um, for those of you who may not know it, I, I did a lot of television and uh, a Cheers and Murphy Brown, and I had any number of pilots, and I did a show called Love and War for a few years with uh, Annie Potts, and, and before that it was... Um, uh, uh, what Murphy was, Brown. No, no, what's the woman that was on? Cheers. No, no, the woman that was on Love and War before Annie Potts. Oh, Marky Lee- Post? No, not Marky Post. It was Jamie Lee Susan Perry. Day. Susan Day. And then uh, movies and everything else. So I've had every chance in the world to make it uh, as a big actor. <laughs> The biggest deal I ever made, the producer of Mad About You, which was a huge show, Mm -hmm. he decides to do a show, and I always played the Jewish guy, either married to the Wasp or married to the... This one was going to be Hispanic. And so Elizabeth Pena, who is a terrific actress, she played my wife, and I played the Jewish guy. We lived in Hacienda Heights, which is um, a a, a suburb of, uh, of Los Angeles. And they hired Cheech, and Cheech was going to play her dad. You know, he would be old. You know, he and I are like the same age, so he'd be older, right? Like Sanford, like uh, Red Fox did on Sanford and Son, right? Right. And so one of the things you want to get as an actor, which is unheard of, is a percentage of the back end. Right. And when it's millions and millions of dollars, if they give you one or two percent, let's say, you know, like like if you had two percent of, of Seinfeld and it's worth a half a billion dollars, you know, whatever two percent of five hundred million dollars is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Plus you get a bunch of money, like forty, fifty thousand dollars a week. I'm not saying this to mm-hmm. brag, I'm just mm-hmm. telling you what the deal was. It's a good deal. So they came to me, they're making the deal, they made a big deal with Cheech, they really want me, and I said, I want some of that back end, and they gave me 2%. I'm, and I went home, I said to my wife, we are rich, mm. we are rich, I've done it, all I've got to do is ride Cheech to the bank. Yep. <laughs> and of course, he and I are going to be dealing with other each other, and so I'm going to, you know, he'll be making fun of me, you know, whatever the deal is, it's a smash. He pulls out of the show oh. to do the Don Johnson show. Oh. He decides he doesn't want to look old or be old. You know what? I mean, there was nothing he could say. I mean, even when I asked him about it, it was on. Yeah, why didn't you ask him? Oh, you know what? I, I, I always forget. He pulled he out of it. it. out. He was hurt. No, but what? And they hire some Spanish guy, and he was a nice guy, but, you know, it wasn't the same. The show never got picked up. Uh-huh. And it's like almost getting to the Super Bowl, and you fumble at the goal line, and you never make it back. But I remember I had counted the money. I had mm. put the money in the bank. Mm. I'd bought the cars. I had bought the diamonds. I w- had already spent it in my head. It's like going undefeated the entire and you NFL the season. Yeah. <laughs> and and you, you uh, lose the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Unbel- Awful. I can't even imagine what that would feel like. How close I was. <laughs> that's how I'm close a I was. Fan, but. And the poor guy that replaced him, you know, we would always go, gee, I wish it was Cheech. You know, yeah, huh? All of that. Uh, let's go to Brian of West Virginia, the Jay Thomas Show. Yes, Brian, how are you? Quickly, we're going to Grady Hunter. Grady makes coffins, made his own coffin, we won can't an award. Keep this guy waiting. Can't so. keep him waiting. Uh, Brian, he wants to make your coffin. Uh, yes, go ahead, Brian of West Virginia. Hey, I don't want to think about getting my coffin made quite yet, Jay, but I got a question about that piss box, man. A little comment. Man, that, that's about the most fucking disgusting thing that, that anybody can do. Are you a trucker? Well, I drive a truck. I don't know how trucking I am. And do I you? Throw piss out of the window? Hell no, man. 
He's that's, a worst, that's the worst possible thing you can do to anybody, man. Millions and millions of truckers mm -hmm. throw gallons, millions of gallons of their own urine out I of saw a cabbie in front of my apartment building the other day at night mm -hmm. in Queens, pissing on the street. Yeah. Right well, there. That doesn't bother me. I, I have, I have done that. Yeah, you've, you've pissed on the street, though. Yeah. That's I not mean, disgusting. Find a freaking bathroom. All right. Okay, well, thank hey, you. Hey, yes, Brian. Hey, Jay, Jay, real quick. Mm -hmm. Jay. Yes, I'm listening. Go ahead. Hey, uh, hey, Shuley, what's Madison's titties look like? Uh, how, they, how, they, how they looking today? You know they what? Pretty good. You know what else? Nice you know what else rat. is disgusting? Calling up and being turned on by some guy talking about non-existent. Who who knows what they look but like? Do you now? notice how my we'll reaction to it? Like I'm not like even. Oh, oh, sir! I just turn right to my left and I go. They look good. Yeah, they they look, look, it's a nice yeah, rat. They look. They look fantastic. They're great. Uh, Ernest of Texas. Yes, sir. How are you, Ernest? Oh, pretty good. I'm a little insulted. I mean, not all truckers would throw piss bottles out the window. Mm -hmm. Just the special ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, You're yeah, insulted I mean, by that? You're insulted by the fact that all truckers have been stained with this, this piss rumor? You know what might be more insulting? Getting hit with a bottle of piss out of a trucker. Have bag. you ever... Where do they throw it? Why can't they wait until they get to the next rest stop to, to dispose of it? You well, we were told the other all, day that they were so fat they couldn't get out of the okay. cab. You know, a piss bottle, that's nothing. I mean, sometimes in some truck stops, you'll find shit bags. Yeah, I'm thinking that, too. You know what? This is the morning show, okay. and we're not... <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not gonna go to the. Hey, the at least they're not throwing them. <laughs> All right. You know what? Wasn't worth taking those two phone calls. <laughs> Why not? It's interesting. It is it? Oh, wonderful. Hey, Grady Hunter, welcome to the Jay Thomas Show with Shirley and Madison. How are you, Mister Hunter? I'm doing great, and I hope you are. We are doing wonderfully, and we've had a lot of truckers call up because we've just found out. I don't know if you know this or not. They sometimes urinate in a bottle and throw it out on the highway, <laughs> and we've had this discussion for weeks now. Uh, were you ever a trucker yourself, Mr. Hunter? No, sir. No, sir. I wasn't, but I've heard of this. and um, Horrible. It sounds pretty bad. Awful. That's disgusting. Sir. Now, you did a crazy thing. You're there in North Carolina, and you went over to the uh, to the North Carolina State Fair, and you won the blue ribbon, and you won it for making your own coffin. Is that correct, yes. Grady? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did, and it's a very beautiful piece of, of furniture. Uh, I cut the walnut trees about 10 years ago in anticipation of drying the lumber, having it sawed, you know, and then taking it from there and bringing it to a finished product. And this, this aroused a lot of curiosity, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Now, uh, most people like me, I am frightened to death of death. I am frightened to think about it, talk about it. Um, you know, when people want, you know, my, my parents had plots, you know, I don't want any, I don't want to know what's going to happen after it's over. I don't want to think about my cold, dead body, you know, is sitting, you know, at the wake and all that. Uh, you started 10 years ago. You're, you're 75 years old now. Right? Yes, sir. So 10 years ago. So you're not bothered by the fact that, that you're making the thing that you're going to be dead in? No, sir. Listen, Jay, this is the only activity that we know we're going to participate in. Mm. I see. And uh, I, I, I've, I've got notes made. I've got 11 pages of notes. I have someone lined up to video my own eulogy. I'm going to do that. And it, You it, have it, 11 pages of notes and the coffin that you've made that looks like a fine piece of furniture right? that you've won the blue ribbon at so that your, your, your death and your funeral is planned completely and written out. Nice. Yes, sir. And uh, it'll be videoed there. There won't be another minister. In, I'm not a minister, but I, they won't, I I want to do it. It's going to be a big Bon, bon Voyage party. Now, will you say yeah. wonderful things about? Normally, the minister would say, "And here lies Grady Hunter," and he would have this, you know, this wonderful eulogy. Uh, what What do you plan on saying about yourself? Well, I'm going to start off by saying, uh, "Friends, we have gathered here not to have a dull and 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 morbid." Uh, session here, but we're gonna have a Bon Voyage party. Do you have music? Is there gonna be music? That. Music uh, in the background? No. Well, uh, we're gonna have Floyd Kramer Floyd. do all all the uh, oh, music yeah. before time, and I'll only have he'll play one one beer at a time, and at the end, mm -hmm. I want to have Kate Smith saying "God Bless America." Oh, oh wow. my God! I'll, wow. I'll have I'll have three little sessions, one being religious. 
one being Masonic, and then we'll wind up with a patriotic. Man, Boy, uh, no, no offense, but your death is a whole big uh, thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, man, it's 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 like it's like it, this is bigger than burying a president. You know, Jews die, they throw well, dirt on him the next day. It's this. over. This, now, Shuley is, is Jewish. Paid for? Shuley is Jewish. He says the Jews just die. Mm -hmm. You throw some dirt in it's the in next it. day. Over the next Done. day, get them in the ground. How long will your will your funeral last? Is it over? There's a wake. I mean, how many days? do you plan on laying in state? Well, well, at the wake, now I'm going to have a little something different there. On, open on casket? The, on, the open casket, but on the on the underside of the lid, Fireworks it's going to be, be a bulletin board. I'll have pictures pe pinned oh, there of, of nice. my friends and loved ones that I want to take with me. Wow. Mm -hmm. And in, inside the coffin there, I'm going to have a bank bag stuffed with one bill sticking out the zipper. And on that bag, it's going to say, who said I couldn't take it with me? Wow. So wow. you've got a joke written, the eulogy written, and, and you took the coffin to the state fair. and, and yes, what, sir. What's, this is not a coffin. This is like a Swiss Army knife. There's right. so many attachments. And what things. division? What division were you in at the state fair? It's a woodcraft miscellaneous hobby. The <laughs> toughest, the, the tough, toughest category there. Oh, and Jay, it's made, yes, sir. You remember in the old John Wayne movies, the old boot heel type? shape of a coffin. Yes, I do. That's, it. That's, yes. That's the way this is. It's like and, a, like a and, pine box, they would call it. Well, yes, yes. And I have my official signature engraved in the head of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's made out of three kinds of wood, mm -hmm. and um, it looks so comfortable at all. I'm just dying to get in it. <laughs> wow. Do you have a headrest? No, sir. It's uh, the from the waist up. It, it goes on an incline oh. from a three inch sponge in the bottom to about twelve inches, and uh, then I'll be in a reclining position. And on my left hand will have my thumbs up, you know, and this kind of thing. My feet. The whole coffin will be open uh, because of the shape of it. I couldn't design it so that we could open half of it. So and you've so, got a, you will see your legs and everything, uh, and you have the suit picked out the top. No, sir. No, sir. It's gonna be pajamas. You're gonna be nice. in pajamas. Wait a minute, are you planning on dying anytime soon? I mean, you're 75, and in this day and age, you could live another 20, 25 years. I understand, but I'm gonna bring that coffin home here and put it in my den, so it'll be in a controlled atmosphere that uh -huh. it don't deteriorate in any way. Okay. Wonderful, okay. wonderful. Well, listen, right. you want to make Great. coffins for others. That's why you've come on, mm -hmm. uh, Grady. You want to start a business? Is that is that correct? Well, you know, it just gave me something to fill up part of my. Uh, I'm, I'm semi retired Retired, mm -hmm. then retired about eight years, and I sure do miss my days off. Right, right. <laughs> so you want to like make coffins for? Do you have a website uh, that we can send people uh, to the homemade coffin website? No, sir. But I could get one sometime soon. But if I could just give my number right now, would be great. They could You're going to give your phone something. number oh, out on oh, Sirius God. Satellite on on, on Howard one hundred one. You may get some uh, phone calls, some sexually oriented phone calls. You're ready to have a lot of orders for a guy Bubba named Bubba Bend Bubba Over. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of crank calls, Grady. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Why don't you get, like, how about uh, you can buy a, uh, a, a, what do you call it, uh, a, a, a website? What do you, what do you, how do you buy it? A domain it? name. A domain. Like Coffin Up, I was thinking. Coffin yeah, Up. Oh. You like that one? I can give you that one. Oh, yeah. CoffinUp.com. That's great. That'd be a good one. You Turn to the right and Coffin. Now, what, now, 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 what, you have it in the living room, and do you use it as a, as a, well, as a I, coffee I will, table? I will after the fair is over. Right now, it's still at the fair. Mm. So when people come to come your home, display, they'll put their feet up on your coffin in at the couch. <laughs> is that right? Well, it's going to be over to one side. I'll, I'll cover it up and not flown it, but uh, it'll be there so I can update these pictures and things mm -hmm. as I go Use along. Use a poster. Okay. Well, look, uh, uh, Grady Hunter, um, uh, get a website. We'll have you back on, and you can make your uh, engraved coffins for people. That'll be great. Should he I wants to give the phone the number? You, you, but, Sean, aren't you afraid? Uh, you know, he wants to do it. No, he does. Grady, don't give your phone number up. Man, okay. clearly doesn't know. You what know what? We'll saying. take the orders for you at yeah. jthomas.com. There you go. There you and go. we'll yeah. move them. We'll send them on to you. for any, And what would you charge for a handmade, engraved coffin? Uh, and you, I'd like one that after I die, a red light comes on, Grady, and I, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> All right. That sounds great. When I'm dead, the red light will come on, and let's just see All if right. I keep broadcasting. All right.
right. All right. Are you going to call me when you get that website set up? or I No, no, I you're going to set the website up. <laughs> no, I am jthomas.com, and they can order the order the coffins uh, through me, uh, and we could put, like, uh, my logo on the side. What would you charge for the coffin you've made? Oh, I... I, I, I'm not got that serious about it. Really? Uh, well, somebody's, somebody's going to order one. You know Come on, that. A grand? Our phones are lighting up already. Two thousand dollars? How much? Two, Two thousand. thousand. It would be more than that because mm. the store bought ones cost a lot more than that. Well, I know Five. that. You can and get two. them now at uh, at Costco, can't you? No. Yes, you can. <laughs> Kiss I has one. Know. No, BJ's, you. BJ's Wholesale Club. No, wait, what it, when you walk into Costco, the coffins are right in the front. What? There's the travel service. There's the car the service. The free hot dog. And, and then the there's the coffin. And I'm not kidding. You get it right there at Costco. But what sucks is you have to have a membership card to get a yes, coffee. Yes, you do. You no, do. No. You have well, to. Grady, thank you very much. Um, yes, and we appreciate it. Congratulations on the blue ribbon. And uh, you want it for your coffin. And is your wife still alive? Well, uh, we're separated. We're divorced. Oh, okay. You're divorced. Did she yeah. think you were a nut? That's why she left you? You were thinking about your death all the time? No, we, 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 we stayed together 44 years. but uh, It's yeah. enough already. Right? Enough's enough. Right. Do you have a girlfriend now? <laughs> yes, sir. And Tripp. She's a and and Trip is your girlfriend. And Trip, yes, that Linda's sir. sister. That's the woman that turned in uh, Bill Clinton, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well, and yeah. Trip, huh? <laughs> Would you I want any not. dirty magazines in there with you in case you wake up? You crazy sob? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you, you put a, you're going to put some naughty videos in there? Huh? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe All right. Not. <laughs> hey, maybe. Grady Hunter, thank you very much, and uh, we'll expect <laughs> people to uh, go to jthomas.com to order their. Uh, um, <laughs> coffin, and we'll work on getting you coffinup.com, okay? All right. Is it possible that I can get a tape of this? Mix? Absolutely. Uh, the eight track. Eight track. Coming right to you. No, he can get a Thank he, you, sir. He can't get a CD of this? Why? They won't let us? <laughs> well, no, Sean. Call me anytime. Moving on. Ooh. Oh, for some reason, they don't allow a CD of this. We'll get you something, though. Don't worry, okay? We're going to reenact <laughs> it. Yeah, you know what? We'll reenact it. That's exactly right. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Grady Hunter, thank you very much. With Shirley and Madison, it's Howard 101. You are listening to the Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. We'll be right back with more of the Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas Show. On Howard 101. Around the world, and up your block. It's time for America to wake up. No more bullshit. This is it. It's a revolution. This is a Howard 100 News Brief. I'm Ralph Howard. A major story with connections to the death of a longtime fan of Howard Stern. A very serious and important story. Howard 100 News reporter Steve Langford has been presenting developments for months. And now, another breakthrough. The company that runs the jail where Kenneth Keith Kallenbach was held until just before he died at the age of 39. The GEO Group, reportedly charged with murder and manslaughter in Texas. This according to the district attorney in Willacy County, Texas. An indictment against the GEO Group, apparently just unsealed. The murder and manslaughter charges against the GEO Group, according to the DA, in connection with a prison the company ran in Texas where an inmate was apparently beaten to death by other prisoners in 2001. The indictment against the GEO Group, alleging the company intentionally or knowingly caused the death of the inmate, the district attorney there reporting the county clerk has not yet accepted the indictment, but the DA declaring the charges against the GEO group for murder and manslaughter are official since they are signed by the foreman of the grand jury. For Howard 100 News, I'm Steve. When a nation's in crisis, when a whack packer loses control, when an emotional friend rears his ugly head, Howard 100 News is there. For serious traffic and weather on demand, go to channels 148 to 158. And for XM traffic and weather on demand, channels 210 to 230. Another Howard 100 News Brief at the top of the hour, or as close as we can get. The Howard 100 News Week in Review. This week, who makes the cut for Howard's dinner? Me, That's you, a fun Fred. And Phelan? Phelan. What about J.D.? Cheech and Chong. Visit Howard. Is that fair to Cheech, though? I don't, I don't care about Cheech. <laughs> <laughs> Will Riley Martin resign? Uh, I talked to Tim. He said, uh, Nick, I mean, boy, uh, you get a not another die. The Howard 100 News Weekend Review. Tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern in Howard 101.
I used to love sex. My wife did too. Then two and a half years ago, kablam, it stopped. I couldn't get erect consistently. Look, she was hurt like it was her fault or something. I was angry. I secretly tried the pills, but they had side effects. At night, check this out, I would actually pretend I was asleep so I wouldn't have to do it and fail. Then I found Boston Medical Group. I was embarrassed, but the visit was really private. The doctor happened to be very cool. He deals with this every day, right? So one short visit and things are working again. When my wife's in the mood, I am ready for Freddy, baby. And work feels better, too. Everything feels better because I'm not obsessing about my problem. Don't wait two years like I did. Call Boston Medical Group. One visit and you could be ready to, you know. Here's the number. 888-678-4604. I'll say it slower so you can write it down. 888-678-4604. These guys saved my relationship with my wife. 888-678-4604. Or go to bostonmedicalgroup.com. Go! Hi, this is Michelle McCoy, and I've lost 24 pounds in three months taking Calagel, and we've got so many other success stories. Absolutely. I talked with Bill this morning. He is down 32 pounds in three months with taking Calagel. This product is so simple. Our average loss is two to three dress or pant sizes in a three-month program, and right now is the time to call. We are offering nearly $100 off our original cost of four packs, This is a limited time special. If you want a great way to lose weight and an easy way, call now. 888-858-SLIM. That's S-L-I-M. This fantastic special is, again, limited time. Nearly $100 off four packs. Call now. 888-858-SLIM. Or visit our website at justbeforebed.com. Don't miss this limited time offer. $100 off four packs of Calagel. Call now. 888-858-SLIM. 888-SLIM. I'm Noel Biederman, president of AshleyMadison.com. Ashley Madison is the world's largest dating service of its kind, catering to men and women who are currently in relationships but are looking for more. Many of you have heard our ads. Over 2.5 million of you have joined our service, and some are still wondering if Ashley Madison is right for them. That's up to you to decide. But if you are living a life of quiet despair, then you need to visit AshleyMadison.com. Every 20 seconds, somebody new joins Ashley Madison looking to have a discreet affair. So rest assured, you are not alone. I am so confident that my service is right for you, that if you sign up today, I will guarantee you an affair to remember. That's right. Sign up right now and experience an affair to remember, or I will give you your money back, no questions asked. For seven years now, Ashley Madison has been connecting millions of people from Alaska to the not-so-Virgin Islands. Our website is 100% secure, completely anonymous, and now absolutely risk-free. AshleyMadison.com. Affairs guaranteed. Hey, Mark, ready to give those new golf clubs a try? Uh, Give me a minute while I finish incorporating my business. Haven't you been running this business in the same location for about 10 years? Oh, sure. My lawyer said the best way to protect my personal assets is to incorporate or form an LLC, and my CPA said I'd get some tax benefits, too. You're not using a lawyer to do the incorporation? Nah, doing it myself with biz filings. The savings will pay for these golf clubs. You're going to need those new golf clubs now that you're a CEO and all. Visit bizfilings.com to incorporate your business or request a free guide to incorporating. Lifetime warranty, no legal fees, no hassle. You're listening to The Jay Thomas Show. Call 888-STERN-101. We're back with more of The Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas Show on Howard 101. of the Stone Age. Queens of the Stone Age. Hey, the Jay Thomas Show. Shirley and Madison are here. Howard 101. Um, we were talking to Cheech and Chong earlier. They both have the young wives. Billy Joel, who is uh, in his 60s, uh, his uh, wife is uh, 25 years old, and she says that she is a successful chef and, and, and writer of cookbooks because of herself, not because mm. her last name is... Katie Lee Joel. Right. 
Why is it that these people pretend? Why? How do they lie to themselves? I don't know. How? I mean, without Billy Joel, you would be like at Popeyes. Uh, you'd be at Applebee's. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be anything. And the other thing is, if Billy Joel wasn't Billy Joel, would you really marry a raccoon face like that? I mean, he's not an attractive maybe man. He's, maybe he's funny and kind. No. Women will marry uglier men. Well, if they're funny and kind. I, I just think it's hysterical. Uh, Katie Lee uh, Joel, Billy Joel's wife, yeah, doesn't take her name for granted. I face the challenge of people thinking that I'm getting where I am because of who I'm married to. Mm. I know that my last name might help me get in the door, but you know what? Once I get in that door, she tells Cosmo, Cosmopolitan magazine, I have got to be who I am. Comfort table is her new uh, Yeah, but book. see, sometimes yeah. the hardest part is getting your foot in the door. Yeah. For the most part, that is the hard having that, is that the hardest in, part. having that in, having yeah. the ability. There's a for, million people who have talent and can write a comfort well, food. Cookbook. The hard part is getting the person right. who's in charge to take you seriously right. and and I'm listen to what you have to say. It's not that hard. There's a lot of cookbooks out there. There's a lot of good actors out there. But if you know someone, if her name isn't Joel, nobody's going. Well, mm-hmm. did you pick up uh, Katie Joe Pulaski's new cookbook? Exactly. Shit. <laughs> That's exactly right. And what drives me nuts is is if if I were married to a younger woman and she would say stuff like you that. Are. I am, but my wife would net what she what's she gonna use my name for? Mm, People true. would like turn away from her. <laughs> you know, my son Not after this adoption story. My son is a uh, uh, is friends with um uh Stuart okay, Copeland's right. oh, daughter, Stuart right? Copeland, so he's the drummer for Stuart for Stuart Copeland. And so he's always for, on the on the on the uh, he's the drummer for police, but uh, on the uh, the camera there at the at the you know the webcam webcam, and he's talking to the daughter, you know, and my son's always talking to the daughter, and Stuart Copeland pokes his head, hey, how you doing, like that and all that. That's nice. So he goes to their house and they fool around with the drums and all that. So he wants to buy drums, and I said, well, I don't know anything about the drums. So why don't you ask Stuart Copeland? Who is the most one of the most famous drummers in the history of rock and roll? What's a good basic drum thing to start out with? Or maybe he's uh, certainly has a deal with a drum company. Yeah. Maybe you get the old drum, and my son says, "I'll never do that. Oh. I would never, I would never say anything to him." And I said, well, "What about if idiot. one of your little friends <laughs> came over?" And wanted, you know, wanted to know something about show business, and they wanted to ask me, and he said, "Oh yeah, like that would happen." Oh, that's what he said to me. Like that would happen. Smack him and throw he hot said, dogs My friends at him. have never even mentioned what you do for a living. They don't even know who you are. That's what he says to me, right? So, so that's the that's the thing in my family. Yeah. No one thinks they can use me for good. What I like about JT, the one I gave up, he knows he can. He use knows you. he can use me, right? Do you okay? think JT? I was watching the Doctor Phil the other night. Yes. Do you think JT really likes you, or is he just using you? I think he and I are the same person, genetically, Mm -hmm. and with our DNA, Mm -hmm. that if I couldn't help him, he would have no interest in me, and if he didn't elevate me, I would have no interest in him. There's no real true love there? No. No. I'm going to go cry. I didn't raise him. His mom and dad raised yeah, like, him. Yeah, they've had no connection for so many years. Why would there be this love there? Okay. My two kids that I've had and I stayed with are walking across the street and a truck is coming. Yeah. Right? JT crosses on the <laughs> other side and a truck is coming. Stop. I'm not going to save him. <gasps> And I'm not going to save both my kids. I'm going to oh. pick the one that's been the nicest to me. The little prick that's the drummer, I'm not helping him. I'm letting right. the truck hit JT and the other one, and I'm saving the tall one. I think you really love JT. I think you really I like do. him. I no, don't love him. I think you love him. JT just... is the best. All right, back Thank to sleep. Thank you for waking Good up. God almighty, just, just came out of a stupor. Good God. JT it's like a starter pistol went off. Now you know you, you know what an start? illegitimate child is, Ira. When you when you have a child, you have legitimate <laughs> children. What what is an illegitimate child? Illegitimate child is yes. Ira, clear your throat. It it's isn't... making me crazy. <clears throat> Go like that. <clears throat> yeah. It isn't your child. It isn't your child. No. Whose child is it? I don't know whose child is it, but JT is number one. Right. Okay. Now, kind of like the seven. What about the other kids that I've had that I kept and didn't give away? What number are they? They're number two. They're number two. And they're number seven. Number two and seven. <laughs> Let's go to Chuck of South Carolina, the Jay Thomas Show. Yes, Chuck. How are you? Sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, Jay. Uh, I just want to wish you good luck on uh, the Today Show, and uh, I uh, I want to challenge you to uh, give Howard Stern's best to Kathy Lee Gifford. Uh, I don't know that that's a bad thing anymore. 
Yeah, I think that I, he uh, ru- they like each other now or something. You know what's ruined Howard therapy? He's no, really I, know. Nice. I don't think he I ever would... apologized to Kathy Lee. I know, but they exchanged, they think, they exchanged the letters air. at some point. Oh. Uh, he was so much better when he was so fucked in the head. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Are you afraid of that, Shuley, that if you ever got well, if you ever went to therapy, right. that you wouldn't be funny anymore or something like that? Uh, some comics have had that pro- that uh, fear, but I, I don't have that fear. No, you I would, have I would... to separate the two characters. Yeah, you have I think, to. Yeah, yeah. I, think, uh, I think being funny in stand-up is totally separate from having a fucked up life well here's the weird thing sure, obviously everybody is happy okay. that that howard is is happy and the, the new wife and not locking himself but in a room still and all a mess of it. on the air and neurotic, that's exactly so right fine. he's it deep works. down inside it's he's just stages it's mess. just different levels exactly. you know? he's, yeah. not, he's not wishing cancer on people like he was 10 years right. ago right. but then again that's why you have jay here's the craziest yeah. thing i once someone said you should go to therapy i went to a therapist i sat down with him everyone should go to i therapy. told him my life story and the guy said to me, you are fantastic. I wish I was. The therapist said to me, I wish I was like you. And I wish the people that came in, and I never went back again. I don't believe you. It's happened. He said to me, you could benefit from, you don't need me. You could most definitely benefit from therapy because you are a narcissist. I went. You are a narcissist. I went. And the guy said, you are unbelievable. And he laughed. And he says, what are you doing and here? he threw money at you. He said, the people in your life are screwed up. That and- is narcissism, my friend. <laughs> That's what the guy said to this me. This is the doctor's diagnosis. Yeah. Uh, John of Pennsylvania, the Jay Thomas Show at Howard 101. Yes, John, go ahead. Hey, morning, guys. Ann Madison. Hey, listen, I had a, oh, I had a piss bottle story. It was kind of funny. I'm, uh, there was a story about uh, road workers in Ohio. Mm-hmm. This is back a, a few months ago that... Uh, they were complaining about the piss bottles being thrown along the road because I guess they would sit in the sun or something and they would explode and they would get covered in piss, I guess. Oh. That was the yes, story. the exploding piss bottle. Uh, we heard about that yesterday. Have you ever thrown an a exploding piss bottle out of your car, out of your truck? Uh, no, I haven't. No. I just keep them and throw them away. But hey, like anyways, Jay, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. one more question. Who would you like in a big game this weekend between Ohio State and Penn State? You know what? I think Penn Ohio State. State's going to upset them. Penn State. I like away. Ohio State. I think Ohio State's going to upset Care to wager, boys? Yeah. No, I don't do any wagering. What do you want to bet? I don't wager anymore. I'm done. <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't really care, to be honest. I um, I only pick teams that I, you know, I, I could care less. I think that Michigan may upset Michigan State this weekend, too. I think so. Oh. Yeah, I think so. But, uh, you know, the Joe Paterno thing is kind of interesting. You know that these old guys don't really coach the teams. Do you know that? Yeah, like when Bear up. Bryant, uh, what's his name, Bobby Bowden from Florida Bobby State. Bowden, right. They don't really coach the team, and he's up in the thing, and they got these young guy, other guys coaching, and all that offensive coordinators, yeah, defensive and all players. that kind of stuff, you know. So, th- so they're just there for uh, you know moral support, recruiting. spiritual support, recruiting, recruiting, you know. How can even that, he has to have an aluminum walker to go recruit guys? Joe Remember Paterno? when he had to take a sit during the middle of the game? He yeah. did. Paterno, yeah, yeah. He ran to the. Uh, he had diarrhea. No. Wait a minute. He, he left the middle of the game. They went down the tunnel. But who yeah. who announced it? But you don't know that he had to make a duty. You don't it know. He came out later on. But wait a second. Did they announce that he went to the they bathroom? They didn't announce it while he was doing it. But he probably you know. made a joke. You mean later time. on? Yeah, it was, yeah. I think he probably he probably had to pee really badly. I don't know that. He's 80-something years and old. Joe Pa coming through. back out All on right. the field. I Thanks bet it was a floater. He's back <laughs> on at the 50. He's on the thing. I don't know. All right. Well, thanks very much. I could care less who wins that game, but I have a funny feeling that uh, Penn State. Uh, that Ohio. You do you care who wins the game? I, I do. I'm rooting for Penn State. Um, by the way, um, care to wager? <laughs> this is a story I want to talk about. There's a place in town here called the Sa- Saigon Grill. They had not paid the guys that deliver. They were illegal uh, uh, Vietnamese oh, guys. Okay. They won a three and a half million dollar <gasps> settlement. Now they're all illegal. That's wonderful. He paid them a dollar sixty an hour. Some of them have made three and four hundred thousand dollars from this settlement, mm-hmm. and so they went from. But if they're here illegally, I don't get it either. How can they? How can they? I don't know. I have no idea. They're not being um, deported. And That's ridiculous. They won four and a half million dollars in I mean, back I'm sorry pay. what happened to them and all, but the guy should be thrown in jail and then they get sent back or something. I, I don't know. They understand. won each one. One guy won three hundred and sixty five three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. And he, and you know why? He he only won a hundred and ninety thousand, but because of his bicycle, the guy never gave him money for the bike for mileage or oh, something like that. Jesus. I'm not kidding. 
And the judge told the guy at the eatery, the Saigon eatery, don't you declare bankruptcy. Now, they're not throwing these bastards out of here, okay? You know? That's such bullshit. Man. And a lot of them fought on the other side, I can... I, oh, yeah. Oh, on oh, the other side. Yeah. yeah. You North. bet your sweet ass they did. That's weird to me, isn't it? That's very weird. Those you delivery know. men didn't fight in Korea. You don't know Not that. Not Korea, Vietnam. Uh, One of them. Yeah, a lot of them fought against <laughs> us. A couple of them. And they came over here like that. Hey, listen, uh, thank you very much. The Jay Thomas Show uh, uh, will be on uh, this afternoon at uh, Sirius Stars 102, and then again uh, next week, and on and on and on and on and on. Time for a little Today Show, buddy. See you there, Ow! Madison. See you there, Shirley. Kind of the see you there. Today Show light. Uh, see you, Garrett. See you, Sean. Bye-bye, Ira. Bye Rev. bye, J. Right, T G I F. I am. RevBobLevy.com will be in New Jersey this weekend. Okay. Killer's coming. I don't hold the little bastards for a while. <laughs> L.A. Rams. Shut up. There's no more L.A. Rams. You fucking idiot. L.A. Rams. Give it a team. And- Howard 101. Today at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Howard 100 News. Week in review at 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific. Super Fan Roundtable. Bubba the Love Sponge is next on Howard 101. Howard. The bills are piled up. Why not pay off those debts with cash from your unwanted gold and jewelry? Cash for Gold. That's cash, the number four gold, will turn your unwanted gold, silver, and platinum jewelry into cash. Cash for Gold is a direct refiner of precious metals. There's no middleman. Therefore, you collect more money. Cash for Gold makes the process simple. Request a refiner's return pack, place your items in the pack, and send back to Cash for Gold. Cash for Gold will send cash within 24 hours of their receipt. Cash for Gold is the only company to offer fast cash. A service that wires your money directly into your account within a day. The Refiner's Return Pack is absolutely free and also insured. Remember, cash in your pocket is much better than unwanted jewelry in your drawer. Call 1-877-GOLD-590 or go to cashforgold.com. That's cash, the number four, gold.com. Mention promo code 100 and receive an extra 5% above the already high payout. That's 1-877-GOLD-590 or cashforgold.com. Cash, the number four, gold.com. Stuck in a dead-end job? Your career just not going anywhere? CUNet understands. So CUNet makes you this promise. Give us a call and we'll help you pinpoint your interest, locate schools that meet your needs, and get your career back on track in just minutes. CUNet helps you take that first step towards furthering your education and career. CUNet will search thousands of schools with programs ranging from certificates and trade programs to doctorate programs. Then CUNet puts that school in touch with you. CUNet's service is always free. Take the first step toward getting your life and your career moving forward all in one simple easy step pick up the phone and call us in the next 30 minutes operators are standing by don't put your life on hold any longer call cu net at 800-514-1327 that's 800-514-1327 cu net operators are waiting to take your call 800-514-1327. Our dog was turning our home upside down. Mommy, he's jumping on me. People were giving us looks like we couldn't control our dog. But how can you control a puppy? We tried obedience school, doggy daycare, even electric collars. But then our veterinarian told us about Poise Calming Treats. Poise has two formulas, Instant and Daily. Instant works to immediately calm your dog for those occasions when you need him to relax and behave, while Daily alleviates long-term symptoms of stress, like compulsive barking, Chewing, digging, jumping, aggression, and other undesirable behavior. And because Poise is all natural, they're safe and non-addictive. For us, it's simple. A calmer dog is a happier dog. And because he's happier, we're happier. Call right now for your 30-day risk-free trial of Poise. Call 1-800-206-5018. That's 1-800-206-5018. Veterinarian developed and recommended. Call 1-800-206-5018. That's 1-800-206-5018. 5018. Are you in significant credit card debt? Is it difficult just making your minimum payments? Are you tired of the harassing calls? If substantial